Welcome everybody to another Friday night of the Al Show with the ladies of Al. My name is Miss Lee, Lady V, and I'm Trey K. And, and only I'm women wear high heels. Al! Woo! Sisters, what's going yes, on? What's up? What's up? So good to be here tonight. I miss you guys. I know I miss you too. How was everybody's week? How's everybody's day? What's Ooh, going on? My week was a hot mess. Really? But I'm not going to complain because God got me through it. Uh-oh. And what you know what? You was. know, when you, listen, <laughs> when you blessed and highly favored, uh-huh. I'm going to tell you something. The devil comes after you. But when you have faith and friends, yes. listen, all you got to do is make a few phone calls for some people to calm you down. Okay. They'd be like, listen, listen, you're not going to take it to the streets. Mm. Calm down. So you was going to take it to the streets, kind of, <laughs> sort of? No, if I was going to take it all the way to the streets. <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Talking wow. about the car loads on the parkway. Wow. I was taking it all the way to the streets. But you know what? It happens sometimes. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm still growing in Christ. And sometimes I got to be reeled all the way back in. So Sometimes they can push them buttons. Yes. You can just... Yeah, my buttons got pushed. Mm. But it got better at the end of the week, you that know. That's all that matters. Yeah. Lady V? I'm can't complain well, last I'm week kinda, yeah. had a great week um I'm, I'm i started working on this uh production that a girlfriend and i have mm-hmm. written okay and um we're finalizing it and we're gonna be we hope to be in pre-production in the next two weeks oh, so wow. yeah nice. definitely Go ahead, girl. <laughs> you. look at you thank you yeah because she's smiling yeah. yeah, I mean that check coming. Yeah, that check <laughs> bling bling. It has nothing to do with money bling, when bling. you do what you're passionate about and you love. But yeah. that might that mean that check coming? No, not always. Sometimes it just means you're just on your way up. It really just means you're on the you're on the right, right. path, well, that's and you can good. feel it. Mm, you know, that's good. Well, my really week was all right. I didn't have no complaints. I mean, I just. It felt like serenity this week. If you had a week where you just had no drama, no mm. no no aggravation, nothing, nothing got on my nerves, I was like, wow, is this really happening? Mm-hmm. Oh, the boss didn't aggravate me. My neighbors didn't get on my nerves. The dog didn't get on my nerves. Like, I really had a really good week. <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear somebody was there. Right. <laughs> good. That's good. Yeah, so I'm serenity right now and that's a really great place to be when you really find serenity definitely yeah you just don't want to let it go no matter how much drama come your way you're just like you know what you can't penetrate me it's Mm -hmm. not gonna get to my soul nothing i'm gonna keep smiling i'm gonna keep shining we'll we'll check on her next week everybody right (laughs) yeah i don't know that's why i'm still still, still, i'm still in that moment right i'm still in that moment we're gonna check on her next week it's easy when you're in the serenity yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) It's real easy. <laughs> but it's easy to get out of it, too. <laughs> yeah. Give me some health topics or tips to this week. What, what we got? Uh, this week, I wanted to do something for the men. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to talk about prostate health. Mm-hmm. Okay. A little bit this week. And um, I don't know if everybody knows, but prostate cancer is one of the six leading deaths for men. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Six. So, yeah, it's in the top six. So it's definitely important to get it checked out. Mm. Um, you know, they do the different tests, the uh, the original finger test, oh. which people may not be too proud or, you know, too, too happy, happy about <laughs> and quick to go get. <laughs> but they do have a new test. It's called the PSA test, okay. where it's actually a blood test. Mm-hmm. And so you don't necessarily have to get the original test where they okay. do the uh, um, your numbers just have to be in between a certain amount mm-hmm. you know as long as your blood levels are between a certain amount you're good and you don't have to go get the um the test. yeah the, the hard test yeah the original test the one that men hate so much <laughs> <laughs> i've heard men talk it, it about it. Right. i've never gotten one it sound like it's painful well you better get yes, your you prostate have. checked a pro- no i never got one are you serious i'm still young what age they say you supposed to it, it it goes up. The risk goes up after the at, after age fifty. Why, why when I said I'm still young, I heard the little size over there. Ah! <laughs> because it can Pastor also Sean develop in in younger Jeez. men. Like in huh? rare cases, it can yeah. develop when you're still young. And you should check your history just in yeah. case it's hereditary. Yeah, and that's one of the main my, risk my, factors. My pops is hereditary. Died of lung cancer. Oh. Not prostate cancer. Cigarettes. <laughs> I don't smoke. But you still have to check your history. What analogy? 
Because right. sometimes you don't know these things. And you're right. right. I just I just was proving that men are hard headed. Very. We are hard headed. We are the hardest ones to get to the hospitals. Very. To the doctor. So ridiculous. You know, we'd be like, oh, just give me some Robitussin. Right. Big lump on the head. Just give me some yeah. Robitussin. <laughs> Prostate Very swollen. Amazing. Just give me some Robitussin. <laughs> so ridiculous. Give me a towel. I'll go away. And, and the thing is about uh, prostate cancer or, you know, they don't really know what causes it. There are no specific causes for it. Really? You know, there are risk factors that I want to get into. Um, and the thing, even with risk factors, somebody can have so many risk factors and not have it. And someone else can have none of the risk factors and still get it. You know what I mean? So it's really important just to be monitored. Like, one of the risk factors is age. You know, at the age 50, men, 6 in 10 cases have been found to have prostate cancer. Another one is race. It's higher in African-American men and in um, Jamaican men of, of African descent. Wow. Do you yeah. think it's higher in, our, in African-American race because they don't get it checked more so as opposed to other races? I don't think it has anything to do with that. I, I think it has everything to do with our it's bloodline. Genetic, yeah. yeah, genetics. I think it has everything to do with that because that's the next thing I was going to speak on is genetics. Mm -hmm. You know, they say if um, men in your family have had it, mm -hmm. you're at a higher risk of having it. If your father has, has had it or your brother has had it, right. your chances double, mm -hmm. over double. And it's more than doubled if, like, your brother has had it over wow. your father for whatever reason. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And all they can do is testing, and they can't specify anything because they don't really know what causes it. That's mm. what's Crazy. so scary about it. Mm. You know, like, um, illnesses like that where you cannot tell me exactly what caused it, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, yeah. how do you even prevent that? Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And but you so, have to just know your history, too. You yeah, you definitely really have to know your history. You have to know where you're coming from, so you should definitely find out about who has it in your family because right. then if you do have it, then you have to have to go get the therapy. Exactly. And then the side effects of the therapy. You know, you you have erectile dysfunction. Oh. Yeah. Once you start getting the therapy. Oh. I bet you they go to what, the doctor. What's the side effects? To what? Erectile dysfunction. <laughs> erectile. You know, impotency. Yeah. If, and 90% if if do of men, if you haven't, you have to go through the therapy oh. to basically slow down the cancer. Really? So is early yeah. intervention important too? Oh, Definitely. Definitely, you know, because you can slow it down, mm -hmm. you know, you can you can prevent it from spreading, you know, and it's a slow spreading like a lot of people don't have signs of it anyway. Mm -hmm. But then you can also have trouble urinating. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, the treatment causes infertility. Ugh. Yeah. And then on top of that, the um, cancer can spread to your bones and cause your bones to be weakened. So it's just like, you know, really just take care of yourself. Get checked, man. Please. Yeah. And the best way to do that is like, you know, they um studies have linked fatty foods like dairy and high fatty meats to to uh, the cancer. Wow. Yeah. So I say just substitute, like substitute the good for the bad. You know, instead of using butter, use olive oil instead of dairy, straight dairy, do low fat or no fat dairy. You know, instead of fatty meats, do leaner cut meats. Incorporate some fish. A lot right. of people don't eat fish. Like I love straight. I'm, I'm allergic fish. to fish. You're Are not you? allergic to fish. I am allergic to fish. Are you fish, really? fish and shellfish. Really? Yes. Oh my well, God. The what happens? I die. Oh, you swell up. <laughs> Just want to yeah, make sure. My, my breathing pass is closed. Wow. Closes and Anaphylaxis. It's a wrap. Well, okay, that's not a problem because the reason I'm saying to incorporate fish really is for the omega threes. Right. Right. You know, and you can get omega threes just by taking fish oil supplements. You know, you don't have to eat fish for that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And more, of course, more fruits and vegetables for the mm -hmm. nutrients. Just you want to do a better lifestyle. Yes. You know, and um, last thing I want to introduce also is a natural herb that can really help, which is called saw palmetto. Uh-huh. And I'll put that Wait, in the chat. you know what? Say that word again, because the way you say it, it sounds French. Saw palmetto. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but it's a natural herb, and I'm very much into herbs. Okay. You know, it's a natural herb that can really help with the prostate. Mm. You know, it's um, been repeatedly shown in studies to reduce prostate inflammation and enlargement. Um, there's no side effects. It's safe. And you can see men who are dealing with this issue can see difference a difference in like four to six weeks. Wow. So for yeah. those of people who don't know where their prostate is located. <laughs> <laughs> you have silly. the picture there. Y'all did not just laugh. 
Yes, like, I did. Like, I'm that's laughing the first at time Lee. ever. Or like y'all in right. health class. Because Miss Lee makes me like, <laughs> why? And the teacher like, said, why does she have to make it like this? You know, it's like a serious matter. She's like, for those who don't know, let Lee, me put up a picture. Is. Let me put up an animated picture of a penis. That's that's all right. That's okay. Human resources want to see them all. Yes, yes. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but that's it. Just, you know, okay. eat better. And if you are dealing with this issue and you saw palmetto can also be taken for preventative measures, too, mm. because it's just keep it's about keeping your body healthy, mm-hmm. keeping your prostate healthy. Okay. If you know that majority of men, it's like even once they hit 80, mm-hmm. like 80 percent of men are dealing with this issue. So wow. let, let me. Um, and this is all, you know, WebMD, the American Cancer Society. This is these, these are. Like fat. So let me let me ask this question, and I guess you can um, possibly split screen it on this because this question is to everybody, mm-hmm. and and it's kind of going to swing it to the topic. Right, right, right. But why do you think people used to live a lot longer back during like biblical times and everything? They didn't have none of these medicines and none of these whatever. They they, they had all natural stuff, right? Yeah, so that's herbs, exactly herbs, why yes. herbs yeah. and everything. Why you? You you think that's the reason? I yes. think that's ex- I, I think because they didn't have stuff like this. Be- before they pres- didn't have like processed and things, processed yeah. foods, and this and that. And they it's like the caveman diet. You know, they literally ate what they killed. It was extremely fresh. Mm. You know, it's just no chemical spray on the fruits yeah, and vegetables. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Wow. Yes. you know, but you have to start somewhere. You know, mm-hmm. you start little by little. I'm yes. not gonna say don't eat dairy at all. Right. I'm gonna say eat low fat dairy. Yes, yeah, you know, just substitution. Yes. Don't do vegetable oil. Do olive oil. Yes. You know, just little stuff like that. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank Ooh, you, guys. Lady B and anything, my health tips. Anything to help the male's prostate. Yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. let's, let's stay, help them out. Let's stay healthy, especially our good men. Yes. I don't want any mighty good men falling short. Sure, <laughs> you know what? Listen. No, affect. seriously, though. We are going seriously, to get. Though. We're going to get into our topic really quick. Today's topic is, has gospel music gone too far? Has the church lost its way? We have a few people in the building with us today, and I'm so happy to have them here. We have Pastor Sean Graham. Hi. And we have Pastor V. Hi, Pastor V. And, of course, we have our other guest, Melanie Carter-Smith, who will be joining us to talk about her music and everything. So welcome, Melanie. So about this topic, so we're gonna jump right into this because this is we've get, we've gotten so many responses to this topic. So it says in the Bible, "Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will." Are the churches conforming to the world to get? more followers to get more people to come to church is is there a catch-22 here and i'm asking the pastors in the building because i'm a babe in christ there's a few people up here who are babes in christ and it kind of sort of seems when you say come as you are uh wear what you want sing how you want dance how you want that it almost seems twisted and confusing to somebody like me when it says do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world mm-hmm. but you're not transforming me if you're telling me to come as i am and act how i want yes, yes. you are can you turn that mic up norm okay is it on Don't break nothing over there. Test, test. There we go, yes. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Oh, thank you. you know, I know you've been on my show, and it's it's good to be in your house. Oh, thank you. You know how that tonight. is. For tonight. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But um, one of the things I wanted to say is when you do conform, mm-hmm. you're actually watering down the gospel and the message. Yes. And, you know, you have to look at it from the perspective of what would Jesus do. That's one of the, 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 the phrases that people use nowadays. He didn't have to water down what he did because it was so concentrated that what he did was what needed to be done. And he didn't conform, per se, but he would go to the places where the people were. And I think that's what people kind of confuse. They think Jesus was hanging out with sinners. No, he wasn't. He was 
he drew the centers to him because they knew that he was the one that had the answers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you really talk about conforming, you're, again, watering down the message. You're watering down what it is that God has for you to do. And it's kind of mixing the, the, the holy with the profane in some sense. Right. And that marriage should never happen because the Bible says we shouldn't be uh, une unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Believer with non-believer. Yes. And we have to be careful when we do those things because what we're saying is we're, we're sending a mixed message. Right. You know, and um, the world and, and the funny thing about it is if you... I saw a documentary where they were talking to some of the kids from the ghettos and the hoods of, of, of this country. And they were asking them what they thought about uh, gospel rap. Yes. They were like, it's whack. All <laughs> they're doing is saying the same stuff that this one's saying and they're just throwing God in it. Yes. Mm -mm. And that's coming from the ones who I guess they're trying to target. Yes. They're saying they but, don't want it. Yes. But is there anything really wrong with that? Well, them saying it? No, them singing it. I mean, I is, is there anything what? wrong with rap? But you're singing to God. I have no problem with any music that's authentic. Mm -hmm. mm. But if you're trying to be the gospel Snoop Dogg, mm. I mean, come on. Yes. We already got one Snoop Dogg and what he's saying doesn't have anything to do with the gospel. So if you're trying to flip it and bring it into church and throw Jesus in the middle of it, I mean, what, what really but, is that? But if that's saving souls. How? If I'm the kids saying. are saying, he said that the kids are like saying, what? Like what? you're not going to save me with a song like that. No, I'm just saying, like in a mean, young, if it was Snoop Dogg and he threw Jesus and God into it. Well, and I'm just saying, and okay. he and he and he's actually, you know, reaching out to that population, but they're turning their life around. They know they're no longer gang banging. They're no longer in the streets. Is that wrong? Because <laughs> See, isn't it about saving souls? I, I hear you, but I go deep into this, and usually, and scientific studies will show. When you play a certain song or a certain beat or a certain uh, at a certain revolution, they're not even listening to the words. They're listening to the beat. Mm, and right. it's the beat that draws them in. And a lot of times they don't even know what the words are. Just like you see someone that goes to a service where they get really, really emotionally high in the service and the service is high and, and everybody's, you know, in the spirit per se. You can ask a lot of those people who come out of those churches. Well, what was the pastor talking about? Mm. Well, <laughs> well, I, I really don't remember all of what he said, but I remember that time when he said we were going to get our breakthrough. And yes, we all, yes. You know, and I'm just saying that because to me and the type of pastor I am, excuse me, I'm going to pass the mic in a minute. Okay. But I really like the, the knowledge part of what the Bible has to say. And I yes. really get into what it is that I need to know, because it's more important for me to know and understand the scriptures than just to quote them. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like I came from that background when I used to go to church and people could quote all kinds of scriptures. And I'm like, man, I'll never be that type of right. pastor, what have you. And it's and it's nothing wrong with that. Right. But to me, I want a deeper understanding of the word. Yes. Okay. You know, and I, I believe when and when I studied the life of Jesus, that's what he represented. He represented going a little bit deeper than surface. Yes. And that's why he was so um, influential in what he did and why people really look forward to to him coming because even he used parables because he was really showing how deeply he was yes. immersed in the word you know because right, he right. was the word made mm -hmm. flesh as the bible mm -hmm. tells us so that's kind of like how i look at scriptures and how I, I come at what i'm doing as far as sermons and anything because i know those sermons that are um you know kind of like more for the people to get excited and energetic right. over but they don't really ret they don't they don't retain, retain anything because yeah. pastor b sometimes people most of the times they go they go to church to hear the word, but mm -hmm. a lot of times it's the songs that can move the soul oh, more yeah. so than the word. Without However, a doubt. However, but you are supposed to listen to the scripture. But go ahead. However, the songs of today versus the songs of yesterday mm. that had a meaning. Mm -hmm. yes. Today's song is about to get you popping right. and screaming and shouting. Mm -hmm. But when you go back to the old days, that type of gospel music carried a message right. that really, and I'm going to be honest, although I like some of the new modern music, right. when I am going through, it is the old stuff yes. that carried a message that my soul goes back mm -hmm. to and it helps me cross over. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. So it depends on, first of all, you got to realize a lot of so-called Christian music today does not edify Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So what are you singing about? Yes. Well, I am not ashamed to say that I, am a, I have been saved and I am Amen. a follower of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Any Christian music that does not speak about or name my Savior, yes. I have a problem well, with. Well, not to be funny, but there's a lot of things Jesus Christ has been taking out, period. So, but that doesn't <clears> negate <throat> that, you know, that doesn't take away from the message. But in the church, right? Mm -hmm. we have what 
I personally think the church went crazy when all of a sudden we went from having choirs that had a little bob to the bank head bounce came yes, to yes, the church. Yes, and the rolls went to skinny when jeans. That came, when all of a sudden, yeah. you know, you, you, the, <laughs> the choir became a spectacle. Yes. Rather than a worship and a praise. Yes. It became about look at me. And I have nothing against particular. I'm thinking of one particular choir minister. I have nothing against him. But at the end of the day, do people remember what you said? Or mm -hmm. do they remember that you could stand straight and bend halfway from your waist backwards? Wow. So you're what? not into praise dancing? Love or, praise dancing. Okay. Done correctly right. and for the glory oh, of God. 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 Not yes. every Christian song is sung to the glory of God. Right. Right. Some of this stuff is fleshly stuff that we done wrapped up and put a gospel title and, and sold it. Mm -hmm. And it's become a business. we want to become inclusive. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, Christianity is... is it is a, it's all inclusive, but at the same time, it's exclusive. Mm -hmm. it, it is to draw the sinner man into the church. But yes. And once you get in, there mm -hmm. ought to be a change. We should no longer look like right. the world anymore. Thank you. But right, isn't right. church a business? It's it is turned not supposed into to be. So why wouldn't music a be a business? Well, I, go ahead. Just no. saying, church is a well, business. I do understand it's about the business of saving souls, so... If you, I don't particularly have a problem with some of the music out there, but I just think that some of it is really trying to go too far out into the world. Mm -hmm. And I think it's lost its way because it's mm -hmm. out in the world and it doesn't know how to get back to the church. This, this is a question that I have. For me, when I hear in a Bible, you know, people twist the Bible and they twist what they want it to say, where it says, come as you are. Mm -hmm. I thought that meant come with your broken spirit, come with your heart, come as a, a drug addict, an alcoholic, right. an adulterer. Now, people have twisted that to come in fishnets mm -hmm. and hot six-inch heels and their cleavage out in muscle shirts. Mm -hmm. And I'm not – and come as you are means if you're poor and you have on rags. I didn't think that it meant that you just come dressed anyway like you're coming from the club because when I go to church – I go with a respect for God. I go with a respect for the other people in the church with me. I go with a respect for my pastor. I go re with respect for the other women who have husbands in there. I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable when I walk in the church with a mini skirt on and fishnet stockings and my cleavage out. So for me, it's a respect factor. Of course, I could come as I am. But why would I disrespect myself, God, and other women and the pastor in the church if if I have other clothes that I can afford. I'm not talking about somebody who can't afford different clothes or a stripper who only has stripper clothes in the closet because we do want everybody to come. But I see people who can afford nice clothes that come inappropriate to church. So I think that, or maybe you can tell me if you think that maybe Call people have twisted home. come as you are to what they want it to mean. Well, I believe, I, I believe, um, that it's a form of maturity that you have to come to. You know, when you're a babe in Christ, you could expect hold, one hold thing. Hold on for I'm one sorry. second. We have a caller. Mm -hmm. Caller from the 310. State your name and where you're calling from. They don't got the call. call back. Okay, yeah. okay but I believe it's an a, a act of a maturity. Yes. You know, once, once you first come to church, if you're not churched. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. some people grew up in church and they know better. Mm -hmm. But some people just have come up the street, come off the corners, come off the out the bar, you know, out the strip club, you know, and you don't, just don't know any better. You yes. know, I don't fault them. But the thing is, once they are in church and they learn the gospel of Jesus Christ and they once the gospel is being taught, you know, by our, by our bishops, by our preachers, once they learn that and allow it to, to live and resonate in their hearts and in their minds, mm -hmm. that's a time for the interchange to start. You know, once the interchange starts and once they give their souls over to Jesus Christ, then the outer will begin to yes. change as well. You know, and I, as, I know when we, when I grew up, um, I had mothers in the church yes. that directed us. That's what I was going to say. Church. Yes. Do you think that it's changed now that the elders don't want to say anything to the youth anymore? I think so. I think so. A lot I'm not saying all churches by no means, but I think a lot of churches have have lost the mothers. Maybe they have passed on, you know, and no one else is picking up that 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 torch to mm -hmm. be the mother of those those young women. You know, the younger ones, your little ones, as well as the younger yes. adults, you know, to say, no, baby, that's a little too short. You know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I had growing up. Yes. That's a little too much. You know, take that right down, close that up. Yeah. And that's how I was taught. You know, so as I learned, that's when I did better. But how, how do you know? know if somebody is walking off the street from a club in mini skirts, fishnets, 
who don't have clothes mm -hmm. and a person who does have clothes. How, who are we to really judge their attire mm -hmm. when they're coming to church for the same purpose as a person who has on a suit, a tie? Are we to judge them? I'm saying it's not about judging. I'm saying, I'm just saying that I go to church on a regular basis with regular people that I see regularly. And like she said, back in the day, if you came in with something too short, one of the older ladies in the church or the the first they lady, mm -hmm. they would either give you a hanky to put over your lap to yep. give you a sign of that's inappropriate. Or they would say, baby, that skirt is too short or that that come over here. Let me talk to you for a minute. Nowadays, I don't know whether it's like the schools or whatever where people are afraid to even say something to somebody that that's not their child mm -hmm. because maybe that person is going to take offense. But aren't we there? It says in the Bible as the elders to guide mm -hmm. the younger people. I, and I think that we should be working inner outer instead of outer inner. Actually, but let me just get this call real fast. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. Special guest Desiree Coleman. We have her on the line. Welcome on to the show. Welcome. Welcome, Desiree. Thank Desiree you. Coleman. Oh, Desiree Jackson. Coleman Jackson. Welcome to the Owl Show. Hi, how are you? How you doing? I'm blessed. How you guys doing? I'm oh. having a hard time. Can you guys hear me? Good? Yes. Yes. We can okay, hear you. I'm blessed. How you guys doing? Thank you first for having me. Oh. To God be the glory. It's such an awesome topic to talk about, mm. especially in this day and time. So I count it uh, a privilege for you to have me on tonight. Thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome, Pastor. Thank you for calling in. What do you think about tonight's topic? Say, say it again, please. Thank you, Pastor, for calling in. What do you think about tonight's topic? Has church gone, lost its way? Yeah, I think I think it's a, an amazing topic, and I'm ready to talk about it and whatever you guys want to talk about. I think it's an amazing topic because I think people need to hear. I think people are searching, and they really don't know, uh, uh, at least the world, they really don't know where to turn to because there's some confusion right now because the the the, the Christian world or the, the believers or the church world looks so much like the world. Mm. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a much-needed topic in today, and I think also it's a topic that a lot of people don't want to touch today either because um, of what it looks like. And a lot of people, you know, and, and we're not going to judge on tonight, but because of the way a lot of people are living, you know, it's a topic that you don't want to touch because, you know, the Word of God is, is double-edged sword. It's going to hurt going in and it's going to hurt coming out. Yes. Absolutely. Wow. Now, we were talking about come as you are and had, has it been, Pastor Sean was just about to speak on, has it been twisted around and how the elders used to talk to the youth and say, you know, that's too short or that, that cleavage is too low. Has Have mm -hmm. we lost that in the churches? So we're going to let Pastor Sean finish what she was about to say. What, okay. I, what I was about to say is that one of the big problems is that the church elders that are females don't want to be elders. Mm. Mm. When you look at the elders, they dress like the young. Yes. It, yeah. it, it's this, we have brought, the church has brought into what's sexy and what's not. Some people have turned the church into the new club. You don't come to hear the word of God. It has become a meet and greet and let's hook yes. up. Yeah. So it, even when you begin to look at the manufacturer of clothing, it used to be a time that church women only particularly shopped at one particular store because you could spot a church woman coming a mile away. Yes. There was a particular uniform of a church woman and because we brought into this I want to be different I want to look different I want to look like everybody else we began to go outside of that venue and began to dress like the world so of course the world is going to come in now I believe we've taken come as you are just a little bit too far yes when you first come to Christ if you don't have by no means stay home because you don't look like everybody else but I believe that when you come and the women of maturity not necessarily the elders but the women that are mature in the word of God will begin to talk to you and school you. Right. Desiree, how, what do you think about um, what she just said about the come as you are the, um, topic and statement? Do you believe in that? Well, well, well I definitely agree. Pastor, with I'm what, sorry. What the, I agree definitely with what the woman of God is saying. Mm -hmm. However, I, I do know that, 
you know, when you are in diverse communities and you're not in the community like we grew up in the hood or in the black communities, Latino communities, you know, you have uh, uh, the Caucasian um, person that, you know, again, as the word says, yes, come as you are. So they're not used to, or, or some of them, I'd say, are not used to, you know, the, the putting on the skirt and the suit, and then you got the hat on the side, and you got the bang on the side and all of that stuff. I believe that the as the word of God says, yes, come as you are, but as the woman of God said, we need leaders, we need elders, we need people teaching and training the young people and, and the people of this generation, the generation before, what godliness looks like. Now, mm. the thing is that we are so harsh with everything, and it's such a turn off to the world. So in one aspect, you have somebody say, oh, girl, you don't need to come in here with that. The devil is a liar, and, and just scaring the people away instead of embracing the people who may not understand the Word of God, who may not understand church. Um, uh, uh, um, lingo and church, you know, attire and all of that. I think what we have to do is first get the get the people in and tell them that Jesus loves them. Mm -hmm. Tell them that Jesus saves. Tell them that Jesus is soon to return. And then the word That's of God exactly. does the changing. The word of God will 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 make them say, "Wait a minute, my skirt is too short. I'm embarrassed." Because I'm convicted now. But so many church people I think of today are so harsh with everything, are so, you know, want to beat you over the head, want to talk just because you sound like church. Mm -hmm. You know, it, th that in itself can scare somebody away. So, again, I'm in agreement. Right. Um, however, I still do believe that, as the Word of God says, it's come as you are. Jesus is not looking at the fact that you have on a pair of jeans exactly. in church. He's not looking that, at the fact that you have on a sweatshirt in exactly. church but what happens is when when in society or in the world when you start wearing stuff that's showing everything then you're just out of order right. you're just you know I, I tell people in my church the, the young girls and they look at me sometimes like I'm crazy because you know I dress hot and I dress you know hip and all that stuff but I say look we're trying to lead people to Christ so hide your cleavage mm. Yes, and and put the skirt down some so that the men who want to be saved are not distracted by yes. what you have on. Yet it is still come as you are. But the thing about yes. that, men are going to get distracted whether you're in church or on the street. And I just think that, um, not trying to be funny, but the main thing is, like you said, they're coming to church. People in the church are supposed to be role models. Role models meaning that you're not supposed to judge the next person. So why are you judging what? somebody because of what they're wearing shouldn't you be more so mentoring their soul as opposed to their clothing you do however if 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 i come into the church and my cleavage is out and i have big boobs and and all you see is cleavage and then all you see is my my, my tight my tight tight skirt or my my behind is all out I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, yes, men are going to get discouraged, but if women are dressed properly, if they're dressed with class, elegance, yes. and representation of God, then they're not going to get, the, they might get distracted by a pretty face, but they're not going, or, or, or even an attractive face, but they're not going to get um, distracted by, you know, uh, again, we cover up so that even in getting married, your husband don't want everybody seeing all your stuff, so why should you bring it in the house of God like that? Pastor Desiree, let me ask you another question. Supposing that that same gentleman that just went to church service for three hours from 11 to 1, everybody okay. in the church is covered up. He walks out into the street, gets in his car, and he sees a woman that's not covered up. How do we prevent that? Should he not, should he not focus on the message of the church that was just catered to him by the pastor? Or should he just <laughs> avoid everything that he just sat three hours in church for and look at this woman's cleavage? Isn't it all upon the individual and not the, that person that's trying to save his soul as a person to the person that's walking down the street because you're going to see people dressed in fishnets you're going to see the mini skirts you're going to see the high heels but we're talking about what but we i'm just saying church but for. i'm just saying but, but we, i'm just saying but we're gonna we're gonna go flesh outside that as well but we're talking about wait, wait, wait we're talking about the church inside of how people are being inappropriate inside the church but i just want to we take all it. have to live outside right. of the church walls how, right, 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 right but, but that's why we wrestle not get the, the flesh that we're fighting right the fact is that okay you can come into the house of god even for those three hours 
and gain understanding, get that get that flesh under subjection, get your mind into a place of godly things, and then you're ready to go and battle the things out in the world. But if you don't understand, if, if, if you're coming in the house of God and you're not getting any word and you're not laying before God and praying and asking God to, you know, take some of those things away from you, of course it's going to be harder when you go out there. Look, I'm going to be honest. I've seen pastors... And a woman in the church was fully clothed, uh, suited up, not showing any cleavage, skirts all the way down to the hills, and they looking at the flesh. So no question, no question. And that's in the church. Flesh is flesh. So the message. I wanted to weigh in on that. This is Pastor B. How are you today? I'm great. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> How are you, Pastor Desiree Coleman? <laughs> I'm Praise blessed. the Lord, sister. I, you know, my husband, we have been married 20 years now. Y'all oh, my like, goodness. Oh, Coleman oh, Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> Coleman Jackson. Hey, there hey, you go. Coleman Des, I, tried, I tried to warn him. <laughs> <laughs> well, as the only man on the panel, I wanted to weigh in. You know, if people are going to look at flesh, they're going to look at flesh, but you don't want it advertised to in such a way that that's all they see, especially in the church, because we're talking about the sacred and the profane. Now, in the church, is supposed to be sacred, and we're expecting it to be that. But in the street, anything can happen. And we kind of know that when we go out into the streets. You never know what you're going to see. I mean, nowadays, you may see somebody nude running down the street. Who knows? But um, as you're saying, um, Pastor, it's, it's, it's important for us to have a difference in the church. And like you said, the Holy Spirit is supposed to convict them once they get in the church and see what the church is about, because there's a certain language lingo that you're going to use is a certain way you're supposed to act in the church. And eventually you'll get that even in dress. You're going to dress a certain way out of respect because, you know, right. the closer you get to God, the more you're going to want to honor and respect him. And you're not going to want to come in as you are, per se. Even though the Bible says that man looks at the outward appearance, but God knows our hearts, we still have to dress in such a way that we can be respectful in the house of the Lord. And I, and I go back to um, when I was growing up, there were certain houses that we went into. We knew immediately we were taking our hats off, adjusting our clothes. We were going to go ahead and make sure we were going to say all the right things because we didn't want Miss Johnson to hear us out of line. Yeah. Because we respected her and her house just that much. And that's not even a church. This is someone's house. Mm. So that same type of respect and even more so you should have when you go into the church, church because yes. of the place that you're entering into. Because if the church becomes just like the world, then what good is the church? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that's the point that I think we're, we're actually talking about here is the difference between the church, church and, and the, the world. world. It's become it, the, the line has so become so thin. It's, it's hard to tell the difference when you're a new Christian trying to come in and figure things out about don't conform to the world. Right. And then you go inside the church and you see the world. So you're like, what am I not conforming to if this is the church and this is what I'm seeing on the street, then I'm kind of confused here. Yeah. I have a question. Right. And, and, you know, even as she just said, you know, you know, do not conform. The Bible tells us do not co conform, which means do not conform to the pattern of this world. Mm -hmm. It's the pat what is the pattern of the world? Do we in the church look like the world is our pattern? Are we moving like the world? Are we, are we walking like the world? Are we talking like the world? That's the pattern of the world. It says, mm -hmm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what, what is God's will and what is pleasing and perfect perfect to God. Yes. It is what is the pleasing and perfect will of God. The, the thing is that what people are forgetting is that we serve a holy God. We serve yeah. a God who is righteous. Yeah. We serve yeah. a God who we can't even comprehend his thinking. Mm -hmm. And while we get into relationship with him, once you've been in a relationship with someone, you, you, you start to to want to please them. You start to want to do things that are, are in their will. And I'm talking about even in a natural relationship. When you're in a relationship with somebody and you love them, you want to do the things that please them. Yes. So, uh, so when we're in a relationship with God, then we start looking at his word and saying, oh, Lord, okay, I know I'm just flesh. I know I'm just human. But how can I please you? Am I displeasing you by my actions? Am I displeasing you by some of the things that I'm wearing or, or representing you? When we reverence God when we come into his place and we say see see it's just a building 
all these places are just buildings, but we've consecrated them. We've made them holy unto God that he may dwell in there. Mm. So if we say, Lord, I want you to meet me in the sanctuary on today, but I'm going in there and I got my cigarettes and I got this and I got all of that stuff and I'm going and I'm expecting you to show up, God. Wait a minute. He's holy. Mm. He's a holy God. So we must, we must recognize how we go before. If we went to another c- country and we went before kings and queens, we would put on our best attire. Yes. We'd go in. We'd say, I'm going to see the king. Wait a minute. I'm going to see Prince, Prince Charles and whatever, whatever. We'd say, I got to go get a new dress and this and that. And we'd go into, that, into the, to the palace and we'd stand there on our best behavior. Yes. And that's man. That's flesh. But, but our father is king of Kings. Kings. And Amen. we don't want to do the right thing. Yes. Lady yes. Lady V, you had a question? Yeah, I um I hear what everybody is saying and I don't think it's necessarily that we don't want to do the right thing. Like as far as I know, the church doesn't have a uniform, right? Because it, it is come as you are. Mm-hmm. So Amen. and I understand that once you come it's supposed to be once I understand the church to be, especially after listening to what you guys are saying, is once you've come to a spiritual understanding, you know what I mean? Like you have now have this respect, then you'll want to change up how you how you dress, how your respect level, how you present yourself in church. But everyone is not going to just step into church and overnight have this understanding right you know right. it's going to take different people different amount different right. amount of time to, to come to that understanding so if people come in off the street and you have a member of the church who's been coming and going for a year now but they still haven't gotten to that spiritual level so they're not completely covering up their exactly. cleavage they're not wearing the long skirts it will look like the outside world to someone right. who's just coming off the street you know, because people come into their understanding in their own time. You know, I'm not a very religious person. I'm more spiritual because I feel like there's so many rules that come with a church. And I feel like there's so much judgment. And at the end of the day, the people running the church are just man. We all make mistakes. You know what I mean? We all have our own things that we've had to battle. We've all had our own levels of where our, our own pastor at one point wasn't necessarily right. showing the utmost respect to God, you right. know, and I feel like the best pastors can get up there and, and preach that, you know, I, I do go to church and I have a, I, I love my pastor, you know, and I feel like a good pastor will speak to you. And like you were saying earlier, you enjoy the message. I love the message. And then I also feel like the gospel can, can move you, you know, but you have to come to that on your own. Like, I feel like you have to, Mm-hmm. And I grew up in church and I feel like you have to want to get dressed. You have to want right. to feel like that. And everybody doesn't naturally necessarily feel that way because some people have no clue. You know, I knew to get dressed for church because my father made me, my parents right. made me, but some people have no clue and they come in with their fishnets and then they have to learn. And not only do they learn, you can tell them as an elder and the, but they may not agree with you, you know, so they have to hear what you're saying mm-hmm. And then they have to resignate that and then they have to understand it like, oh, that's why I shouldn't do that. And then that has to turn into, I don't want to dress like that. I want to cover up. And that may just take time. That's not going to happen overnight, which is why I agree no the elders are no very, very necessary and very influential, you know, to guide and to be like, you know, this is why you may want to think about doing X, Y and Z, you know, so I, I don't know. Well, I agree. I, 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 and, and the one thing that you said, and I think in a clearer way of saying it, is that God will meet you right where you are. And we right. thank and praise him that he will, if, if you're not there yet, he's still loving you. He's still right. waiting as long as you're striving and trying to get there. And even pertaining to, as you said, you stated the long skirt. I don't wear, I mean, just my flowy dresses I will, but I mean, just because I go to church, I don't wear long skirts. And I don't, I don't agree you have to wear long skirts. I, I, I just believe that you should be appropriate. Right. Uh, you should dress appropriately when coming into the house of God. Right. And I, I, once again, even you said in the beginning of the, the statement, um, you know, we are the church, each individual. Right. God, is, God said, I'm coming back from my church. What does that mean? Not a building full of Amen. people, but it means individuals. The, the, the church, 
building is the temple of God where we worship, but he's coming back for the bride, his, the people. And once we all understand that, and we, we go to church to fellowship, to hear the word of God. He's anointed pastors. He's anointed people, ministers, to be able to understand, to give revelation out of the word of God. So that's why we go to the temple or, or, or as we say, the church. But we are the church, the people. And God just wants us to, honestly, he wants us to love more. And once we begin to love more and, and accept him, then he'll give us revelation of what we're supposed to do. So that is the minor stuff, the dressing, but you still should. If you got to go to your, dro- your job ch- dressed appropriately, mm-hmm. then I believe yes. that you should go yes. to the house of God dressed appropriately. I, I totally agree. But what I'm another thing I'm getting at is that people may not look at it the same because people revere things differently. Not saying it's right or wrong, but, you know, some people might look like, oh, I'm going to see the king, and that's, you know, that's everything to them. People might be saying, you know, I'm going to a Jay-Z concert. I got to get fresh. But then I got to get up and Can, go to church speaking in the morning. Of, you speaking know what of I mean? Jay-Z, they just, they um, revere things Lady differently. V, speaking of Jay-Z, God. like we're, like our youth is influenced by rap music and videos. Yeah. Has gospel music taken it to another place that our youth are emulating what they see on these gospel videos now and the way that they're dressing makes them think that it's appropriate to go to church Dress the way that they see the gospel singers dressing now. Well, you know what I've learned, and and again, going back to the dressing, and then, and I will address that question. Um, you know, I, I have a, a a women's group and young ladies that is called Ladies in Destiny, and during the process of teaching them, I spoke individually to certain of the girls and stuff who had just come on board, and a few of them whispered to me and said. Um, in the, in the very beginning, this is what's in the stores right now. So mm. if, you, if you look at, um, you, you know, you can go up and down in the mall and everything, because it's the season, because it's what, what designers are making right now, everything is short. Yes. Everything got a little, whatever the swag is of the season, that's what you're going to find. So not that you have to just go in Sears or you have to go into the old stores to, to find appropriate things, but... Um, I, I just think that um, I lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry about that. But I, I don't think that it's about dressing. But I, as far as Jay-Z goes, I think that because they're seen in the media as, you know, hip, hot, they're they're overexposed, so that's all you see. So that's what the kids want to be like. They want to be like what they see. And if the media would show more of uh, – not necessarily only Christians, but more positive role models, then I believe that the kids will want to do that too. The kids will want to be like that, just like when, you know, Beyonce, she's beautiful and she, you know, she has a wonderful body and all that stuff. So the first time when she started doing her bootylicious dances and, and wearing the clothes, you know, that, that went along with the dance, that's what the young girls wanted to do because that's all you saw, the, the market was saturated with it. So sometimes our young people are falling prey to what's on TV, but that's why it's so important that certain things are being taught in the home yeah. regarding um, regarding church, regarding the Lord, regarding uh, uh, what should be, so that when they step outside, just like the man we talked about in church, when they step outside, they'll already know what they're up against. But has has gospel music just become the new R and B with a with a God people singing about God? Has gospel music just transitioned into a business instead of actually trying to give a message can i weigh in on yes that? you can weigh well, in pastor as, sean as a non-singer but as a, a church leader and a, who loves music i believe this is my personal opinion and i've done a little research is that it has gone too far we've crossed the world anytime you have a pastor in his pulpit singing always and forever the tune but he's thrown god in it yes in a couple of spots now when i hear always and forever god knows i am not thinking about anything godly yes because that was a song back in the day Mm -hmm. it moved me back in the day so although he threw god in it in a couple of places (laughs) now all of a sudden it's a church song no yeah because god is not being glorified by that and i've seen a couple of pastors who have done that and it's real cute and cool and your congregation all of that but i can sing a tommy dorsey hymn 
and get the same point across as I can for something else like that. So I think in some vein, we've gone too far. I believe that for me, the first person was Kurt Franklin. When I heard stop, I was like, oh, Lord, no. But then, because I do love the Lord, and I know we've got to reach some where they are, I said, for a babe in Christ, just to draw them in. Mm-hmm. See, that was to send them in. But then that was when the seasoned folks were yes. supposed to get them and take them from the start. And, and that song the, was a lot of controversy with yeah. that one song. Yeah. But it also brought, like you said, a lot of people and, into and the church. Because right. that's what made me start going to church. Mm-hmm. That's More that's really. the point, too. I, I, well, before, but in, right. really into right. it. Mm-hmm. The, the, the point Not I want to bring up my is that we hear the, the cliche, which everybody says, Jesus was radical. Jesus was. Jesus was very radical with his, his ministries and, and his teachings. So as time evolves, as the new generations, there's different ways we got to seek to kind of pull people into the church. So now, uh, so with the music, it, it, it may be with the music and it may be with the fact that you're allowing them to come in in the jeans and the Timberlands or whatever, because when you talk about the real world today and all the problems we having with these gangs, people are so, these youth are so far away from the church that you have to design a plan. Like pastors all need to come together. And what are we going to do to reel this new generation, this new wave of kids into the house of God? So, so you, you know, when you talk about the music, changing a rap lyric it to me i think we're going a little bit too hard on it because it, and i love music too but if somebody's gonna redo a biggie song and then they're going to talk about jesus christ and then they're going to talk about god they just doing it over the biggie beat or whatever and and, and one of these little gang bangers hears it and like they bop their head to because like you said they're going to bop their head to the, the beat first mm-hmm. so everything is baby steps Everything is baby. Even coming to Christ is baby stuff. No, can I say this though? Can I say this? Mm-hmm. Back in the day, we didn't have all this gang banging. We it's just going worse and worse and worse. So oh, whatever they're doing with the music and 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 switching lyrics and remixing it and flipping it and rubbing it down and all of that, <laughs> it's not working. Cause back in the day, listen, whether the youth was different or whatever, that it's not that's not working. Like whether radical people twist and turn that Jesus was radical in the Bible and he was mm-hmm. doing this and he was doing that. Something's going terribly wrong because we're not drawing the youth in like we used but to. But we don't because we don't know how to reach them. We're not trying to relate. And the best we're, way and, to reach them is through music. And, and the, but yeah, no, but, but listen, influential. you can't. Mm-hmm. I, I've heard pastors say, "I'm scared to go in that neighborhood." Mm-hmm. Well, see, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to knock on doors if you really about Christ. And, and I got to say this: if you really about Christ and saving people and bringing people in, you got to knock on some doors. You got to go to places you a man of god where you really you don't want to go it yeah, may be unsafe of course but you you got to go because the only way you're going to be able to reach somebody like that mm-hmm. is you have to talk to them melody but, but, gospel melody. But, yeah tell I, mean, I, I, oh, I agree i agree mm-hmm. totally with that because god has not given us a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind so when god leads you once you're led by god not of your own flesh you're saying i just see the need and i just want to go you know god will lead you to different places and once you're led god will cover you you know the covering of god is always on us and i just wanted to talk about the remixes and things like that because i have done a few remixes in mm-hmm. a couple of venues that i um had to go to and i don't know if you guys are familiar all i do is win 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 no matter what you yeah know, yeah, that yeah. Thing. And I did that. And that's the straight up worldly, you know, a worldly, a worldly portion of that, you know, which is the hook. T- um, I forget the person that, that, um, Khaled. Yeah, 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 yeah. DJ, DJ Khaled. Khaled. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and it was like, God gave it to me for that reason. The venue I was going to, it was a mixed crowd, you know, and God would give you strategic ideas yes. to pull and to draw. You know, it's not just only one way. It's not just only one way that you can draw. Say if a person was on the corner, they can hear that. Of course, the beat is catchy, you know what I mean? But once they hear the words of what I'm saying, it's all glorifying God. It's not glorifying myself. It's not glorifying man. It's not glorifying DJ Khaled. It's glorifying and frying God so once you draw them with the beat mm-hmm. and it's it, that's one area that's one way but then once they hear it they can by bopping their head to it but what they listen once they start listening to what I'm saying it'll meet it'll touch the it's heart. heart it'll touch their heart go ahead Pastor mm-hmm. Jackson I agree with I, I, I agree with you. that I, I agree with all that was said to a certain extent I, and I, I I just believe that um you know when you think about the gospel what is the gospel the gospel is the good news mm-hmm. 
So when you think about the good news of, of Jesus, um, the good news being the word of God, being the inspired, being the inspiration, um, I think you can just hit a wall and, and, and that's creating a beat. And you say the good news over it, which is the gospel, and somebody's life is going to be changed. And just to go back to what, um, I think it was a pastor, I'm not sure, the woman of God, she was talking, just to say, you know, to go back to changing lyrics and stuff. I must say even myself, I've done some concerts, and, and one of my favorite songs to do was Alicia Keys' If I Don't Have You. And I remember um, listening to it on the radio, and my, the, the, the spirit of the Lord just came upon me, and I just began to cry because she was saying, some people want it all, um, but I don't want nothing at all if I ain't got you, baby. And I just began to reflect on everything that the Lord did in my life, everything that he's doing in, 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 in the world and who he is. And I, believe, I, I began to say, um, some people want it all, but I don't want nothing at all if I ain't got you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, during the time that that song was at its hottest, I took that song and I, 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 I delivered it. You know, in church, you're not going to have people that only listen to gospel music. As much as we would like that, that's not ever going to be the case. Well, most of the time it's not. But when I, when I sang that song, people came to the altar. People began to run down and lift their hands and say, Lord, I just want you. People began to turn their life over to him. So I would say, Mm. And that's just my experience, mm -hmm. that I feel you, I feel everything that you're saying. Right. But, you know, there's technicalities to what you're saying as well, because you can have a Biggie Small song, or you can have a, a Lady Gaga song, for example, and they done chanted over the music, and they done prayed mm -hmm. yep. demonic forces over the music, and then you come and you try to put, you know, the Word of God mm -hmm. over that, which, uh, uh, again, that's a whole nother topic, but I believe there are instances where you can take a song. First of all, that's what they've been doing to gospel music for forever. Amen. Right. If, if, you, if you go back to the days of Aretha Franklin and everybody else, or, or, or way back when, when the, um, I don't even know the names of the people, but basically, you know, they would go to the church. And right, then they right would Charles. hear the church, and they would hear the rhythms in the church, and then they would take it and do pop music with it. Mm -hmm. And it's time to take back. It's time to take back the stuff that the devil. We can't be tricked. We, as the man of God said, we got to go, and we got to get these young people any way we can. But yet being respectful unto right. God, understanding yeah. that he is holy. Right. So we're not going to do just anything, but that, that comes from the teaching. That comes from the person who's in your leadership, who's teaching you. And, and as you get revelation and reading the Word of God, God will convict you about some things, and he'll release you to something. I, I think it's, it's 1 Corinthians um, 10.31 that says, Whatever you eat, drink, or do, whatever it is, glorify God. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that has a lot to do with what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So no matter what we're doing, mm -hmm. what we're speaking about, what we're singing about, some way, some form, it has to glorify God. Right. So when the message, when the message, when you don't feel the anointing from it, yeah, that's when we need to, to look back and check it mm -hmm. and like, hey, something's wrong with this because I don't feel the anointing from it. I mean, and I think whether it's rapping, it whether it's singing, whatever, mm -hmm. if you don't feel the anointing from mm -hmm. it, yeah. it's 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 not of God. Right. I think that's the feeling because, like um, Pastor Desiree was saying, there's been so many songs that come on the radio that we've heard mm -hmm. that are not just from the church. Mm -hmm. And you're just listening to it. And that same instance has happened to me. And it just spoke to me. And it's like, this song is about my relationship with God. This has, n you know, I don't know who they're talking about. I don't know about who Alicia Keys is talking about. But mm -hmm. this is what I'm feeling from it. And it's just a feeling that overwhelms you. So I understand where it's like, some of the music may be going too far, mm -hmm. but I think we should also maybe look at the intention yeah. because I look at a certain song that way. You know, Pastor Desiree looks at it, that Alicia Keys song that way, but other people may not look at it that way. Mm -hmm. And other people may look at it like she's taking this too far. How could she take this Alicia Keys song? But it touched her when she heard it yeah. on the radio right. so much so that she decided to perform me. it. It's right. Yeah. Right. So much so that she decided to perform it in a concert. And then so much so that, it touches other souls so much that they want to come now and join because they understand and they feel it. So I just, um, 
I don't know. I guess it's kind of like individualized. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I guess it's what your spirit speaks to. And that's my question. Like, what makes it a gospel song so so much? Well, a gospel I'm, song yeah, gl- it has to must glorify God. give God the glory. Right. It must it's tell of the good yeah. news. <laughs> right. And, and in the good news is that he came. He died. He rose. He's coming back again. That's the good news. Okay. And so the song should in some way give him, it should tell where he brought you from and where you are now. And that only God could do that. Right. And Mm -hmm. some of these songs don't say that. No, but I was going to ask you. So like the Alicia Keys song, for instance. I actually like that song. I've heard the changing. When I first heard it, I never heard Baby. Right. See, sometimes it's the intent of the writer. Right. She may have put in Baby, but we don't know what God intended when he gave her that. Right. Some songs were made to be love songs, not to glorify God, not to even be considered a love song between a person and God. Originally. And those are the ones that I have issued that are. All of a sudden, you really haven't changed it. But every few beats, you throw God in there. Like, oh, as an afterthought. Okay, I'm going to throw this up there. Right, and it's right, right. not done to give God the glory. It's, right. it's a hook. Yeah. Right. See, we've gotten into the hook business in the church. Yeah. And the only true hook is Jesus Christ. Yes. We're trying to get you to stay with everything else. But I tell you, if you preach and you stand on the word of God all day long, and you step try if you stop trying to catch them and allow the word of God to catch, catch them, them, we'd be in a better place. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I am not a non I consider myself a radical preacher because one, I tell the truth. I'm very, very transparent. Mm-hmm. I have preached in camouflage. I believe in going to get them. I have done what I needed to do to go in because I used to be a youth pastor, so I know that we've got to catch them. Yes. But once I catch them, what do I do to them? I've got to show them it's about a change, and change for some takes time, but we don't give up. We put them in new members' classes. We teach a woman how to be a woman by what? The virtuous woman and by a Titus two woman. Yes, it takes time. Yes, they've only gotten certain clothes in the stores, but I tell you, if you begin to look on the racks, you will find something that is appropriate and if it has too much cleavage do like i did tonight put a tank under it yeah you know there are ways to alter stuff so that you're not hanging out there's ways to sing a song so that it glorifies god it don't have you thinking you're trying to get a contract with the with the latest record company yes i agree and it's 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 we can't put God in a box. You know, sometimes yeah. we box God up and say, yeah. he can't do it this way. He can't. Who are we to right. say that? You know what I mean? Yeah. God uses so many different avenues to reach the lost at any cost, any type of avenue. And um, I can recall a song, um, I Will Survive. That mm-hmm. was back in the yes. days, a long time ago, a song, I Will Survive. And when I heard the testimony from that song, and that's a worldly, that's a secular song, you know, but... God, I, I believe, you know, once once I heard the testimony, I believe God gave that woman that song because when she was talking about it, she said she received so many letters that, she, that when people heard the song, they stopped, they didn't commit suicide mm. because they mm. felt they could survive. Right. You yes. know, they didn't jump off a building or crash their car because they felt they could survive. They can make it another day. So that's like a worldly song to, to us, you know, but right. God uses so many different avenues to reach those ones that need to hear. Yeah. Hear that I, even though it's not Jesus, Jesus name not in it you know mm-hmm. what i mean but the the message came mm-hmm. to whoever was about to slit their wrist that right. saying i can survive i i can live another day it's not that bad you know yes. what I mean? so yes. god can use any type of avenue he wants to use it's not in our own finite right. thinking yeah god is so such a big guy you mm-hmm. know that he can do anything Pastor do Desiree, what's your final thought? I mean, before I know you, you, we kept you on the phone for a long time. But what's your final thought about the t- t- topic for tonight and um, the judging and coming as you are and the music? Um, I, I think my final topic is that um, you know, once again, it goes back to if we show the love of Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. you know, for God so loved the world, everybody knows John three sixteen. For John to love the world that gave his only begotten son, that you know, everybody knows that that um, scripture. But if we begin to show love to one another and show godliness, then people will see the church and want to run to the church because of the love that's emulated from it, mm-hmm. from the love that's being you know given from it, and and they would be less prone to dip on, dip and dabble in. You know, I, I know somebody that was a Buddhist, and and you know, then I know somebody that was Muslim, and somebody that was this, and somebody that was searching in all of these areas 
when really all they wanted was uh, the, the peace that surpasses all yes. they, all they wanted was to know that they were they were loved in spite of their sin, and Jesus died for the sin already. Or, 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 or they wanted to know that they wouldn't be looked upon as, even though we are all nothing but filthy rags, mm-hmm. but they wouldn't be looked at when going to the house of God as a filthy rag, yes. but they would be embraced. And I think, you know, from the music, we talked about quite a few things, and from the music to the um to just everything we talked about, I think it all goes back to, you know, why did Jesus die on the cross for us, for, 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 for our sins? And, you know, God gave his only begotten son. So, you know, it just, I mean, you could get, just get deeper and deeper and deeper, but it all goes back to, to love. And, then, um, you know, our foundation, we didn't get to talk much about that. Um, but if you have a strong foundation in God, mm-hmm. I, I think... You are you are more understanding to things because you know that you were a baby in Christ before. Yeah, and I, I, you know, you know that it took you to get to this point that you are today. So instead of beating somebody over the head, expecting them them to be where you are right now, embrace them and let God do the work. Right. Yes. Again, I think we have to, as the church, we we have to love on people and let them know. Guess what? As pastors. I'm not perfect. Um, my husband's not perfect. Uh, we're, we're just we're, we're just trying to make it into the kingdom. We just we're, we're we're just praying that when when he comes back and the and the rapture happens, that I'm going to be caught up to meet him because he's soon to return. Right. Uh, um, you know, so I, I you know I can go deeper and deeper right. and deeper, but that's my final thought. You know, the the, the Lord's desire for us is to abstain from wickedness. Yes. And give, give our life to Him, right. yes. that we may make it into the kingdom. Well, thank and you. that's the focus. Mm-hmm. That's the fo- That's what the focus should be right. in every church. Yes. Okay. And I, I, again, I think because I grew up in church too, so we have a we have a way of having the church lingo and and mm-hmm. knowing you know what to say and 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 being bold. Mm-hmm. Yes. At the same time, God said, "There's times when we we got to be meek and and yes. and leading people to Him. There's times we got to be gentle, like Christ. There are times when we got to embrace the person and say, you know what? I know you don't you don't understand all this, mm-hmm. but let me just tell it to you this way. Instead of hitting them over the head with it. Right. Well, thank nothing. you so much for calling in, Pastor Desiree Coleman Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for calling yes, in to thank our you. show. Thank you. We Ooh, appreciate you so much. Glory and bless- each and every one of you, and I'm coming home soon, and hopefully we're going to worship together one day in New York yeah. when we have a service there. And but it, it's, in the, it's in the plans right now. Thank you so much for your um, interview in the Movement Magazine. This is Trey. I interviewed you over the phone. Oh, Hi. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. Your interview is so awesome. The magazine is out now. Okay. Where can, where, where can the people get the magazine? Um, Norm said, "Please send him a gospel song so he can play it tonight." I will put. I will have Norm send you a listing of where to get the magazine from, and okay. I'll and, and Norm will call you so he can send you one exclusively. Right. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Tell him it was already sent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell him it was. Tell him I sent him a song where I'm not doing a lot of okay. singing, but it's a little. It's a little. Not even well, it's ministry, but but Bishop Hezekiah Walker is featured on it. And she, he should have that in his email now. Oh, okay. Right. Well, thank thank you, you so, so much. much Woo! Thank you. God bless you. All right. God you have a good you. night. So we're going to um, get What's back to... In uh, the chat. Oh, in the chat. We got a lot going on in the chat. Um, ben Gittin, it is in the chat. Sh- Shonda? Shonda. I think that's her name. Shonda? She looks Shonda. like Shonda. Shonda. Not Shonda. sure who that is speaking, but I totally agree there is a church in Rochester that has turned many youth around, including my niece. When she told me, I was like, what? Hello, ladies. We love the feature of Pastor Desiree Coleman Jackson in Volume 4 of the Movement Magazine. We have gotten very positive feedback on the article. God bless her. Um, what does everybody think about the new upcoming show called Pastors Wives? I'm so glad that you asked that because that is just what we were about to talk about. <laughs> yeah. What is that so, about? Is it really a Drake show? not wait to get into this. Yes. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. We go from has gospel music gone too far? Mm-hmm. Has the church lost his way? Mm-hmm. 
to where we're having disrespectful reality shows mm. when did it become okay to exploit god on a reality show and does wow. everybody think that tell me exploitation? about the show because i haven't heard about it what one of it? the shows is called uh millionaire pastors of la that's the newest wow. one that's, that's the newest out. one then they had the sisterhood with the pastor's wives out of atlanta <laughs> then they had the daughters of yeah, the pastor's that, daughters they took that off that came off yeah they quick. took that, that well the sisterhood the has been canceled too from what i understand but is it well, okay? The show's telling you, like, like, like the bad part about it. Well, just... the pastors, the millionaire pastors, their trailer is showing them, you know, in Bentleys and and mm. Ferrari, mm. saying, you know, Jay, if Jay Z and this person, and that person, <laughs> God wanted us to have the abundant life, and this and that. I never okay. ever thought that God wanted us to flaunt anything. That's right. And like pimps. And I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody because God wants us to live an abundant Amen. life in Amen. all areas Amen. of our life. But when is it Amen. too much? E either pastor can well, answer. I, I would like to weigh in. I think it's too much when you're going on a reality Amen. show. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Showing everyone what, what you're you doing and, and how you're doing it because God is not getting any glory Amen. out of that. I mean, yes. they may say God wanted me to live this way, but you need to show the real work. Yes. And that's the work of saving souls and the work you do in the church. Now, if that's the spoils of what you do, then that's your business. But I don't think you should broadcast it and put it out there like that because the world already has an image of pastors mm -hmm. that is not favorable that's all the right. time. And if I'm pulling up in my Ferrari for my reality show and, you know, I'm looking I'm church. looking just like uh, uh, a secular artist, you know, that artist is putting out something that the world wants and the world is receiving it. And they have no problem with that artist driving 10 Bentleys and four Ferraris, but a pastor, you have to be caught. You have to be Humble. so cautious and, and <laughs> careful because the humility factor, yes. exactly, because you don't want to be, the Bible says pride comes before the fall. Ooh. Now, if I'm speaking prideful and I'm living prideful and I'm showing you how I do what I do, mm. then there's no, Jesus wasn't, as far as I know, he came in on a donkey. So He wasn't even <laughs> on a white horse. So my question so, to you, you know, is now, like, in all these instances, People are twisting what the Bible says Amen. to make it what they want. Well, and I wanted to say, too, because I really wanted to weigh in on the music thing, oh, because I heard what everyone said. You know, I don't have a problem with music if it's spirit led. I mean, did you pray? Is the Holy Spirit leading you to make this yeah. music to inspire? Mm -hmm. Then I don't care what beat you use. That's because right. like Norm said, I'm going to feel the anointing and I'm going to say, wow, this song is blessing me. Right. It's the and intention. it doesn't have to be Jesus, 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 oh, Jesus, God, Jesus, God. Jesus, right. God, God, Jesus. It could Jesus. be instrumental. Amen. Because no the anointing is there. <laughs> right. And that's what's going to move my spirit. It's right. not going to move me because you use somebody's beat or recycle right. the beat 10 times. Right. But, you know. We gotta. You, we we just have to get back to the basics. Amen. We just have to get back to the and basics, and I think when we get back to the basics, then we can see exactly where God is moving us. And the us. basics is don't judge someone right. no. else's soul. Exactly, and you know what? The judging part that needs to it stop. It comes from people looking at the outward appearance exactly. again. Exactly. But if you're in the spirit, now you can see that person's heart. You can see their spirit because now you're discerning what you see, mm -hmm. not what your 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 natural exactly. eyes, which is spiritual eyes. Right. And see, that's the thing that I'm not seeing. This nobody spirit led to go on a, a reality show right. and show all your business. No. Because you got to figure these are God's people who are putting their tithes and offerings into your church. So, yes. okay, now I'm going to show you that your tithes and offerings went to not to help someone else, not to bless somebody else, but yeah. so that I can have a big spread with three Bentleys, a big yes. Olympic sized pool and a Ferrari to drive down to get my hair cut. Well, I personally I mean, am not going to stand in between anybody's God. I mean, if a song or Bentley or whatever that's going to get you to closer to God and it's going to save your soul. I'm not going to stand between no one's God. I'm not going to judge them. I'm not going to be opinionated towards it. I'm not going to criticize somebody else's opinion. I just feel like the the victory is in the saving of the soul. Amen. Uh, the, and don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. The word of God is what we use right. to to deal with everything that we have to deal with and how we, how we right. weigh and measure everything. But what I'm saying is we have to be so very careful that the world is already judging us. See, yes. the world judges the church all the time, time. Mm -hmm. because now the way I look and dress, 
I don't dress like your typical pastor. You might see me with jeans, boots, whatever, because that's just who I am. But isn't it fair but, to, and I'm just going to say this, is okay. it, isn't it fair to kind of judge the church if the church, if the church is supposed to be the mentor of the world? I don't have a problem with that. That's what I'm saying. The church has to be careful because we can't be the world. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of, of it. The world. So now if I'm being in the world, being like I'm trying to do everything that these secular and, and important or superstar people are doing, then I'm not affecting any change because I'm just the same as you are. But there's so many churches that are of the right, world exactly. that we, see, we don't even see. Like, so I've been personally to so many churches where it is a monetary thing, where mm. the congregation will speak and they want their pastor to be living you know, large per se, or it's, it's what's, I've been to churches where as soon as you walk in, they're speaking about giving back and, you know, you'll get your blessings tenfold and they're pressuring you to join the church and give to the church. And, you know, it's, these That's are the, the pressures. Church. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You, <laughs> absolutely. Red but, flag. No, definitely. <laughs> you, but hear what I'm saying. <laughs> they have a congregation. You, you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. So, like you have you have a whole congregation you have these churches where these these pastors are doing it these pastors are leading these people well, of god well let to me say this. this way on the time magazine a few years ago they had a picture of td jakes yes. and they said he was the next billy graham mm -hmm. so that was really saying he was the spiritual leader of the country mm -hmm. per se because billy graham we all know how big he was and how his ministry is still very viable but, you know, T.D. Jakes has transferred from the church to Hollywood. Yes. Right. yes. So right. he was supposed to be lead of everything. And I'm not just throwing his name out there. I'm just telling you what the facts are. But he went Hollywood. Right. So a lot of these other pastors who are watching and, and emulating yes. and want to yes. be like, they're going Hollywood, too. Well, that's but what, what I'm saying, saying to you is it's so very dangerous because that's not in the word of God. Amen. I totally that is agree. Not and in that's the what word I was God. saying earlier. And this is one of the reasons why I'm not religious and I'm more so spiritual. Because I do believe if you do find a good church or you listen to the word of God or you read the word of God on your own, it'll speak to the individual. Right. You know, I believe individually, you know, we have God in us and we right. have our own relationship with God. I believe in going to church to further my understanding. Right. But, you know, I just because you have these situations where T.D. Jakes went Hollywood. Right. You know. You just don't know if you just follow someone blindly, and that's what so many people are doing that's because right. they have so much but, trust. And like what the pastor was saying, it is supposed to be about love, and it should be. And you right. should love. You said something about religion. It's a difference between when you go to a church and it's about religion and relationship. I go to church because it's about a relationship with me and Christ, and Amen. it's not about right. religion because right. religion Amen. has rules. My my relationship with God is about the Bible what the word says and he has no rules yeah but today we've been speaking so much about rules exactly. how you shouldn't be in this church looking a certain kind of no, way no, no, no. How we you said be in church. no it wasn't about rules today it was about have people has a church lost it's its far, way far. as far as what it says in the word of god no but it, there were clothing. rules the clothing, clothing the music and right. i feel like everything is intention well, well, you know okay. those, those are rules <laughs> Yeah. Let me just okay. close out. I just wanted to say this. When and I don't get me wrong. I do agree. I do agree that once you be once you come to a spiritual understanding, uh -huh. you will naturally not you should, but you will naturally want to dress a certain kind of way, come to church a certain kind of way, show a certain kind of respect. But people are going to get there on their own. People have that own you know, their own level right. within them. And that's going to mm -hmm. take exactly. time. But when we talk about what should be done and what should be then there's there's a bit of judgment there, and then that well, that that's a bit of I, you know wanted, it's like it's I'm like a thin that word. I, I, keep go ahead, that yeah, word me too, please. Well, let well, me just let me just say this. It's a thin line. line. It's a thin I, line. I, I before, just wanted and to before say before you go, I want a quick comment. I just wanted to ahead. say one thing. Mm -hmm. When church becomes a business, a lot of things happen because even the messages that you 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 preach are different. See, the word is supposed to do the work. Right. The only thing we're supposed to do is preach the word in season and out of season. Right. The word will do the work. The Holy Spirit will convict and everything will happen according to God's plan. Right. But when we start just preaching messages, that's going to be money messages. Right. And this that's is the barely. same, you know, uh, season harvest breakthrough, this, that and the other. 
you know, everybody doesn't need that. Some people are right. really hurting and they need you to tell them the exactly. truth and speak to their hurting areas. And that's what's important because now you're starting to bring about healing and healed people will want to do better. So Absolutely. they won't come to church the way that we're talking about people would come to church. But we got to let them do that on their own Absolutely. time because God has a time schedule for all of us. Absolutely. There's a season for everything. But again, when you start to make it into a business and you're trying to see what you can get the people to, to give and mm -hmm. so on and so forth you're totally missing out on the purpose of preaching the gospel absolutely because yes. when i give to church it's because i want this right. church Not to do exactly. better exactly you know that's exactly. why i give to church it's because Amen. i just every sunday every sunday the pastor's talking to me every sunday it's mm -hmm. like how did you know you know it's like <laughs> yeah. hey, well you're in the right place well you're in the right place that's why i give Amen. to church pastor sean <laughs> What I wanted to say is I've heard that word judging. The Bible tells us to oh taste and see and to try the fruit by the fruit. I slip into judgment when I pass condemnation on what I'm tasting. Mm -hmm. When I look at you and you're not dressed well according to the social mores of the Bible, not what I say the way you should come to church, but how the Bible says you ought to come to church. I only become judgmental when I condemn you for coming that way. I'm just saying to you, I'm not, so if I'm looking at you and I'm seeing that you need some help and I'm a pastor that if you don't have, I will take you to the store and yes, show you. Right. That's how radical I am. Yes. And I've done that before. I'm not just saying it off cover. We can call a few people with the church <laughs> as a Get junior, him on the phone. As a, yes. as, a, as a, a junior pastor that spoke to one of my kids about wearing jeans. I, I went ballistic. I took her to the store. Didn't ask whether her family could afford it or not. I showed her what was appropriate. And then I provided it. And then I have an yes. open closet. If you need, and I, because, see, I can't stand lap scarves. So rather than have you sit there with a skirt too short, I will show you what an appropriate yes. is. And then if you can't afford it, I will show you how to sew. Yes. So you, Pastor I don't. Sean. And Pastor Sean, yes, is this appropriate? Is what appropriate? Is this picture appropriate? This dress, the outfit. Tamla's dress? I actually like that dress. Okay. It's fitting. Mm hmm Would I wear it? No. Which Can that I looks good on her. And so that's as as a woman of God, because mm -hmm. she is one, mm -hmm. that's appropriate for would I wear that to church on a Sunday? No. no. But would I wear that at the dinner with my husband? Yes. Melanie. Yeah. It looks like a dress for a performance, you know, and and, and with a performance. You still have yes. to look holy. You still have to look godly. And it is fitting. It is form fitting and it is to me an appropriate appropriate length. But um Going back to what you were saying, as far as um, the intentions of pastors, mm -hmm. there's a lot of witchcraft going in on in the churches Amen. nowadays. Right. A whole mm -hmm. bunch of witchcraft, yes. right. mind, mind basically uh, making people think what they want them to think. Yeah, you know? and they're not using this word of God. They're brainwashing. Yeah, brainwashing. Yeah. Yeah, brainwashing. Yeah. There's a whole bunch mm -hmm. of that going on. Yeah. So, like we said, that's a blessed church that you. It's hard yeah. to find mm -hmm. good preachers, good teachers. You know, yeah. and I believe these two are great. You know, minister right. of, God, of the gospel. Can I just but, say something mm -hmm. too about judgment? Because mm -hmm. that word is being thrown around a mm -hmm. lot. There's a difference between judging somebody and correcting somebody. Mm -hmm. We have, I have children at home. I have nieces that when they dress inappropriate, I'm not judging my nieces. I love my nieces. I would never judge them. But when I know that they're doing something that's not good for them, that that they're one day probably gonna regret because they don't know no better and what the only way to do better is to know better Amen. and when only way to uh, is for somebody to tell you definitely not somebody judging you or saying oh miss lee your cleavage is out and this and that because i'm gonna tell you right now there's a lot of people in church that do judge and will talk behind your back and that's exactly the person who comes about. to you and says miss lee you have on tights and the men in the church are all whispering and talking about right. you because you're dressing inappropriately but you know what my response would be i'm not here for you but mm -hmm. but still and, my, and i'm not trying to be funny but this would be my response i don't want your man i'm not here for a man okay this is what i'm, I'm just saying yeah my i'm saying but this be, is what i'm saying my like, response is i'm here for the lord like this is, right. what, this is what i'm gonna say like we have these women that run around and they dress inappropriately and people are talking about them at the supermarket, at the club, at this, at that. It has nothing to do with I'm here for you. I'm here for the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is why we say, why would she come out the house? She must not got no friends because if a person comes to you and you have that attitude, nobody's ever going to come to you again 
and try to help you. So you'll be the one running around. I wouldn't take it that as help. That people would be, well, you can't be I on the take defense. It as, mm-hmm. I, would, I would take it as constructive criticism, but then take my compliment or my mm-hmm. comment to your constructive criticism as the same. Basically, you're saying you could take it or leave it. Right. You know? so, so the way you're coming at mm-hmm. me as, uh, as you're trying to help me, mm-hmm. I'm just going to take what you're trying to do and say thank you, and I'm going to keep it moving. But, but don't get offended by the way my mm-hmm. response is, by no, the way I that would, you're coming to me. I would never get offended. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying but that it works like both that's ways. why a lot of times we see people dressing right. appropriately mm-hmm. and we say, that person has no yeah, friends. Right. They must not have no sister at home. He you. must not be married because when somebody comes. That's judging. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not judging. That's when somebody judging. comes and tries to gently correct the situation, people right. always want to call it judging. Right. It's not always judging because you come to church in the Bible. It says certain things what? and you can, and you don't know better if you. You're not supposed to respect disrespect the church. Right. Mm-hmm. So when somebody comes to you and, and sits okay, down and tells a woman. Yeah, I don't so, think that's judging. Judging is like right. I've said, all churches, right, they exactly. have them. Those, but you know, you know there's cattiness that goes on in the church right. that's mm-hmm. talking behind that's your back. Good. When you try to correct someone, that that's, is being helpful because right. they may and not And that's know. constructive criticism. Right. I call it. Being done and, in love also. And, and love. And I appreciate it. somebody yeah. coming mm-hmm. to me telling me that. But here's Right. And it goes back to the intentions. If you have good intentions, then it's going to be welcome. But it's and it's all in the manner of the approach because if you're coming to somebody and you're coming in a harsh right. scolding teacher parenting type of way yeah. then that's they're going to look at it as judging criticizing putting down right. nobody wants to be put down but if you come in a warm heart with good intentions then yeah that's Perfect. And then that may turn them away from the church so many and people take, yeah. have that mentality they have that you know that's how they feel church is it's like it's but, very judgmental they don't want to go because right. people are going to talk about them and, you but know. Should, and, and that but should goes, we be and that afraid kinda, in the church all, not at all. Mm-hmm. like like she said that mm-hmm. might turn somebody away from and the church mm-hmm. and, but and this me. is why i'm saying that the judging for me, not I'm, the not the helping out of love no, but no, the no, judging I'm, I'm saying that's why for me I, I asked the question, mm-hmm. is the church conforming to the world because we're scared somebody's going to walk away? Mm-hmm. If you're going to walk away, there's nothing that God ain't got, God can't do in his perfect time and that is going to be done. Mm-hmm. If that person walks away from the church, they just not ready to be in the church. But that's not so, right. Because or be maybe that's not the right on. church. Well, hold, hold on. Hold mm-hmm. on a second. Let's just rewind. Because honestly, let's if you rewind. have a good let's church and you have like a, a church that's out of love and that's what you're teaching, mm-hmm. I would believe that the congregation is going to be the same way. Mm-hmm. So everything mm-hmm. is going to come across that way. So if you, Trey, come to me and tell me that my skirt is too short, if this is a good church with a good congregation, that message is going to be received well. It's going to be mm-hmm. relayed with love, and it's going to be received in love. And I'm, a, you know, and I may right. jump on the defense because people do that naturally. Right. And then I may go home and be like, you know what, really she, that sister it, was yeah. really mm-hmm. just trying right. to help me out. You but know, see, here's 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 where I want to rewind for a second because I actually was on that side of the fence, and I'm on the other side as well. Because when I first started going to church. I went to, I guess, it met a, maybe it's because it's Pentecostal or whatever. But it was it was other churches. Mm-hmm. I came to church with a, a, a earring that was a little below the earlobe. Mm-hmm. And I came to church with a skirt that was exactly to my knee. Okay, nobody said anything to me. Third time I went to church. Came to church, um, same kind of way, whatever. So finally somebody says, you know what? You're not supposed to come to church with earling, earrings below the earlobe. I said, oh, okay. I like the church. I like the pastor. I like the message. Mm -hmm. He says, and your skirt is supposed to be one hand below your knee, Mm -hmm. whatever. So I says, this is, everybody's looking at what I got on. And here I'm about to join this church. And now I realize that you're worrying about what I was wearing all this Mm -hmm. time, as opposed to me coming to the altar, trying to pray for me getting saved. And you're worrying about that. Mm -hmm. That really did at that point, which I was going through a lot turn me away from that church Mm -hmm. because of all that judgment and so now i'm out there searching for other churches to find a home which i thought at that time that that church was going to be it yeah but you wouldn't have been comfortable in that church anyway if that's their rules and regulations right that you wouldn't have been comfortable yeah that's just not the church for you yeah Yeah. but i'm just saying but then how long would i would have ever found another church i Mm -hmm. might have just turned away from god all the way you could have Mm -hmm. is what i'm saying so it's all on the approach right i believe that Everything must be done in love. Mm-hmm. Every approach, 
Um, there is a way that you approach people. Um, that's why you don't send everybody. Everybody has a role in the church. Right. Mm-hmm. And you should have, each leader should have a team that addresses certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, if I have a lot of people who have the same issue, rather than approach individually, I'll do a mini conference. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. nobody is feeling picked Don't on. Right. Yes. Right, We're just right. addressing this as a general. Yes. And prayerfully, you will catch right. and see yourself in it. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't at some other point, then I will have to pull you aside. And usually it's because I'm, you know, babe, mm-hmm. let me just tell you, love your outfit. Mm-hmm. You really do. <laughs> mm-hmm. But there's a little few modifications mm-hmm. we should make to this. So because the Paul tells us, see, I always go back to biblical. Mm-hmm. If I can show it to you in the Bible, yes. you can argue with me, mm-hmm. but you can't, can't dispute argue the word. The word. Right. And yes. Paul says that right. we should do nothing that gives the appearance of evil. Now, to you, it may not look evil, but if it is causing your brother to fall, if your brother is too busy looking up your skirt and at your cleavage that he can't hear the word of God, it, sometimes it is in Coming upon us, I know I hate this role no, as a woman to be. I got to protect him, mm-hmm. but guess what? That's yeah. the role. But here's God the thing, us. too: you can have on exactly, which is a nice, very mm-hmm. nice outfit, what you have on, and you can have a guy looking at, lusting after you, mm-hmm. look, looking after you, mm-hmm. as opposed to Muslims where they fully covered, mm-hmm. right? And they mm-hmm. only, and the women only just showing just you know their eyes. Mm-hmm. So how do you go from? the Baptist or the Christian way of dressing as opposed to the Muslim way of dressing where you should both fully clothed and hairs tied up and everything. I mean, so it's like you put one mm-hmm. one stipulation and one rule on this and one rule on that. So who, who are you supposed to follow? That's your choice of religion. Uh, I'm just saying, I know it's a choice of religion, but it's still about the flesh. But well, and once again, rules. we're talking about rules. And we're talking I, about I rules. I wanted to say right. something because, again, I'm, I'm the only, I'm the only point, male but go ahead. on the panel. <laughs> How would you guys feel if the pastor came out with a muscle shirt on? I'd be so mad. And some, some tight shorts or some real tight slacks on. But the and, pastor and you know is you can see all this happening. That congregation. His, that's but I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. But how would you feel different. if all the men dressed like that but, too? But because the I pastor to, dressed like that, would that be a problem? Like Miss Lee said, I'm there for church. But I, have I to, go to church and these so people there dressed inappropriately. I don't want your man. But I'm there for the word. So I mean, that's just the way they dress. They wear muscle shirts. No. If you're there for the true word of God, if you're there for the true word of God, it would matter. It wouldn't matter. Would you think that was disrespecting the church? Yes, I do because I see a guy at church every Sunday. With a muscle shirt on. Okay. And I'm just like, um, are you going to the gym or are you going to? <laughs> and, you know, every once in a while he'll flex. And I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason. <laughs> but you, ain't gotta, you don't have to look. You don't have to look and you don't have to sit but, next to him. But the right. purpose, the purpose for me saying that is I know that when we talk about inappropriate dress, it's always on the female side right. more so. And I understand why, because of the attraction powers and so on and so forth. But. It's really across the board. Yes. But I'm human. And, and, and I see the guy right. with the muscle shirt. And, and, and it's not like I'm looking at him or I want him because he comes with his wife. But Trey, he, he wants to be seen. Obviously. That's what I'm saying. And, and he's he comes wearing with a muscle, the muscle shirt. shirt. Church. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm really saying. Like, <laughs> so this is not like I'm looking at him, Lady V. Yeah. But he walks into the church every Sunday and he walks past me. And he starts flexing. And he'll. Pop a muscle, <laughs> and like it's like a twitch, and I'm just like maybe he's trying to get on your nerve. May, I don't know what he's trying oh, to do, just but saying. I'm just saying maybe he's, trying he's to flexing aggravate for you. Jesus. I'm just saying. So is he a, is he a Jesus. sinner for dressing like no, that? No, no, no. He's not. Oh, he's not a right. sinner. No, no, no. I'm asking. Yeah. I'm asking. No, he's not no. a sinner. I didn't say that. But I'm saying but it's that inappropriate. I, I put that out there because you know, again, it's across the board that everyone should, and they will be convicted if they're really coming to church for the right reason. Some people aren't coming to church for the right reason. Let's just let's just put that out. Out there. Yes. Some people are coming looking for a man. They looking right. for a woman. They looking Regardless for regardless of they're how they for, dress. They could be in their uh, best church attire right. looking for a church man. Exactly. They're looking know? for a, 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 a opportunity. Right. Yes. And it's not that they're looking for Jesus. Now, no. as you said, sister, if you were there looking for Jesus, and I can see your heart because I'm mm-hmm. spirit. I'm moving in the spirit. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be so concerned about what you have on yeah, cause really because don't. your intention is correct. Yes, you yes. know what I mean? And I know if your intention stays like that, you're going to start thinking about, you know what? I love the Lord right. so much mm-hmm. that I want to make sure I and honor the crazy him thing about and come to church, to church the right way. To try to say they want to find a man or a woman, but, and I hate to say it, but a lot of times they just left the club yesterday. Right. So I'm just saying it's a lot of, 
and you yeah you got to find the right church right but Absolutely. there is a lot of facade and hypocrites Definitely. that's in the church mm-hmm. yes. who get on their knees in front of the altar and pray yes. to god yes, on yes. sunday mm-hmm. and then come out of church and then pray against their neighbor on monday wow. and that's exactly what i was about to speak a about lot of hypocrites we can speak about church attire and we can speak about gospel music possibly going too far but what about the sinners that exactly. come to church every Sunday? And right. you spoke no about sinning. Paul. This is what. And doesn't Paul also say that, you know, to get rid of the sinners that are in your church? So do you take that literally? And just yeah. because you go to church, you know what I mean? mean that you, you just, have this nice we, image we, we, or something. We, um, that, and that that's. That's and actually that's not what it says. We, I, I believe what you're talking about is that when 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 one is caught in a fault mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you um that he was speaking about a, 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 a particular situation of a mother and a son. Mm-hmm. And he said for time, put them out. But you have to go back and restore. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's what we you got. It was a totally different. We don't put the sinner out of church because then we'd be out of business. Right. Exactly. Jesus said he didn't come to save the saved. He came right. to save the lost. Yes. Who's the lost? That's the sinner yeah. man. Right. So you can't be putting the sinner out of the church. What Paul really was speaking about is people that are in positions that are still sinning because we have a lot of pastors who yes. are still sinning but they're in well, a leadership yes. you have deacons bitch so what you do is you set them down you take them out of that position okay. until they get right you never really kick them out of church right. i don't want anybody to think that what we do is we take away your position so you can reconcentrate on why you came okay. and that was to be saved you right. can't help anybody else if you're still caught up in your sin and in yes. your faults. Mm. And so that's what we're talking about. We listen, right. it, th- the church is a hospital. Yeah, you agree. don't send well people to a hospital. That's you right. send sick people. Right. And anytime you go somewhere where everybody's well and there are no sick people, then you need to run to the nearest exit. Right. Lying. So but, and with those people being sick, then isn't it going to be isn't it almost um expected that people Hold are going to be please. dressed inappropriately originally, or music may, may go originally right until the they reach that spirituality you, on their own as the word becomes see the word does one or two things it either runs you or it draws you right mm. so the longer you come you will be drawn so when and drawn is being convicted right i didn't come to church even as a pastor i didn't start out dressing like a pastor I, even though I grew up in the church, some yes. stuff might have been inappropriate, but they kept loving on me. Mm. And the more I came, right. I wanted to give not man my best. I wanted to give my daddy my best. My father yes. says, I am a queen and a princess. Princesses don't walk around dirty and jacked up from the hair. Mm-hmm. The right. But we- so I began to, I began to, my clothing of both men and women should give Subject, be under subjection and glorify our father right but what i hear from you is yeah. as the word which is in time and right. then you wanted right. so this was your own up. will oh. right. and people come to those things in time right, right. we, ha- right. we right. have a caller Jesus caller from the 973 state your name and where you're calling from so Toro, what's going on what's going hey, on Arturo? Arturo? i'm good i'm good just so uh, real quick just wanted to say what's up to the ladies Hey. hey, what you think about very, <laughs> very interesting uh, topic you guys got. In fact, uh, a friend of mine was just was literally just talking about it a couple of days ago about how to bring uh, the, the youth more to a uh, more to the church. And I'm no I'm no stranger as far as um you know uh, you know the the youth and and the church wise and everything. Um, a, a pastor had recruited me and a couple of other friends that I graduated with years ago to start so, uh, some youth programs. And we automatically said, you know, start whatever you do, start with the music, because that's where you catch young people. Right, right. You know, a lot, you know, a lot of the older ones, you know, they, the older generations, they were completely against it, thinking that we were going to bring it to the hip hop or whatever. Right. And we said, unfortunately, that is where the youth is at. Mm-hmm. I'm not mm-hmm. saying, you know. Go up there like fifty cent, dress like fifty cent, and lace a couple of raps or whatever. Right. But you gotta you gotta catch them where they're at, and they keep on saying, you know, come as you are, and we'll take it from there. So the traditional versus the new school, that's definitely gonna that's always gonna be a battle. But you gotta you can't preach to them. You gotta get them where they're at, and I'm and I'm gonna testify to that. Okay. You know, but however you however you can get the youth to it. You know, do what you got to do. 
Do you have they, they, any they other? They definitely need church in them. Do you have any other suggestions for reaching the youth besides music? Um, I'm a music man, so you know that youth. You got to get into their heads. You know, besides the music part, get in, you know get into their heads, mentor them, and I don't mean just by throw the book at them, but get into their heads, like mentor them, take them outside of the church. Don't just talk church related stuff. Right. And I'm only saying that because that's how they got me and my and my friends. You know, don't just talk church related. Pull life at them. Start conversations. Take them outside the church and mentor them like that. All right. All right. Thank you, Thanks Arturo. For Thanks, Arturo. 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 All Stay right, the chat ladies. With have us, a good okay? night. See you next week. Chat. All right. Okay. Now we have to get to our very special guest. We have recording gospel artist Miss Melody Carter Smith here with us. Hi, Melanie. Thank gospel you for hey. singing. We're going to call you gospel yes. singer, Melanie Smith. Thank you for Smith. sitting in with us and, and, and joining in on this conversation. It's been a lot you going on. You can tell right she has now. a voice because All she's really reserving it. You know, yeah. she's been reserving so it. So tell us a little bit about your project first. Well, God allowed me to um, release a single in June, June 11th, exact to be exact. Um, and it's just been a journey from there. You know, God's blessed me to be able to go down south Myrtle Beach two years ago, two, I'm sorry, two uh, weeks ago. And um, just was at a, a music festival there, you know, Fire Fire uh, Fest Reloaded. And it was really like a hip hop type event, you know, uh -huh. gospel hip hop, how they call it, what they call it nowadays. Yes. And it's like, um, it was a lot of rappers, you know, and it was a lot of, it wasn't that many singers, you know, I was really the only singer, <laughs> but it was a lot of rappers. And um, the thing is, with what we're talking about music and how it has changed mm -hmm. or has, hasn't changed, we have to come to a place in music and in, in God, if we're going to change to say the beats or something like that, it has to still have the same power, yes. power of the old, you know, have to have the same power. So it's, um, well, I remember um, during the conferences, it was also conferences and things like that. And um, they talked about how, well, if I can worship God in a, in a, in a, God, I need thee. You know, I need thee, him. Yes. Then in a rap song, I, they should have the same power because it's the word of God. It should yes. be the same word of God. So even if something spit, somebody's spitting rhymes, I should be still laying on my face before God because I hear right. you know, what the spirit of God is saying to me and to my heart. You right. know? So that's where the, the, the music uh, ministry has to come to, a place of still having the power, not being watered down, still having substance with um, the lyrics. But um, back to back to what God has given me, you know, this song just just for me, um, it has come from a place of distress, has come from a place of uh, oppression, has come from a place, a place of just a struggle, okay. you know. And um, once I once I realized where my place was and, and where I wasn't anymore in God, and I said, Lord, I need you now more than ever before because I need the power once again. I yes. need that anointing once again. So once I felt felt that God was restoring me, that's when he gave me the words to, um, to just write and with the melody and with the track and everything like that. Now, it goes in right along with the, what we're talking about. The beat is not an old school you know beat it's an up-to-date beat but the words are still the word of jesus christ okay you know, before so. we're gonna mm -hmm. play that right now before we do that we're gonna thank pastor b for coming in with us because i know pastor. we held you way longer than we were supposed to thank you so much for your words of wisdom and letting us you gotta it. come back and join yes, us on, on for sure part, or part two. two yes definitely <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I'll make it's sure I'm here on time. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You. My uh, security got me here a little late. That's, That's okay. My chaperone <laughs> slash security uh, slash yeah. all of the above. <laughs> Well, if you're talking about the first lady, she tripped me when I went out there <laughs> <laughs> because I kept because I kept you so long. <laughs> thank you so much for Thank coming you for in. coming. Yeah, we will have a part so two. We'll, we'll need you again for that. Yes, I look forward to it. It was a pleasure it. having thank you. you. And God bless you. For, and thank you for having me because, you know, when I came, I was thinking, we're talking about music. What kind of music are we talking about? And we're in <laughs> well, the car we trying to figure out what songs we're going to be singing. I'm like, well, I don't know what kind of song, but I'm going to be ready. Yeah. But it was a very, it was a great topic. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of people are going to get something out of it because right. there's a lot of perspectives. But at the end of the day, it's all about God yes. Yes, it and is. his son, Jesus Christ. And that's what I want to say, because we can go all over with this. Right. Yeah. But as long as we end up at the altar, we're all right. right. Yes. And your soul is being Amen. saved. Yeah. Thank you That's so right. much. Thank you so much, Pastor. So we're going to put you. on your song right now. Amen. So let's let's do that, Norm. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why Jesus sacrifices his life.
Yes, yes. The Holy Spirit and I. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So nice. tell us a little bit about your label. Well, the label, Low Records. <laughs> <Woo-hoo-hoo! Yeah. laughs> Low Records, it stands for Light of the World. That's what we stand in. I will actually have presses in the building. He is the co-owner of Low Records. Okay. I'll have him speak on right now. All right. Yeah. It's press. Welcome, Press. Hey, ladies. How y'all doing? Hi. Great doing? discussion. Great discussion. Um, Low Records, as Mel- Melanie mentioned, does stand for Light of the World, coming from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16. It's sort of our foundational scripture, so to speak. And we go by that because we feel like we can't just stay in one area. We know that we've been commissioned to go out and reach people. So mm-hmm. we understand that music is very influential that it can really determine your mood. You know, you can put on a certain song and it can make you feel real good or you can put on a song that might make you reflect back and yes. make you sad or, yes, you know, yes. some songs get you in the mood to do some other things. Yes. Um, so we understand the importance of music. So we feel like the Lord has chose us to use this particular art form, whatever our talent, whatever our gift might be, to use it to try to extend, expand the gospel to different areas where we may not be able to reach physically but music is sonic, so it can go everywhere. So what was it about Melanie Carter-Smith that made you guys say, we have to be the machine behind this woman? Amen. Um, thank you for that question. Um, Melanie, just the way she carried herself. Like, she was a person that we actually went to the same church at one point, Salvation Hill of Deliverance in Jersey City, where uh, her pastor is her father, John Carter. And watching her and seeing how she carried herself, and it was like... Even if she, you know, had flaws and had issues, she was very transparent. She was real, mm-hmm. but it was a genuine love for the Lord that, like, really drew us to her. And seeing that, you know, what she could have taken her talent and done anything with it. Yeah. Because she has a <laughs> phenomenal voice. So, but seeing her taking that and saying, you know what, I want to use this talent just to glorify the Lord, that's very rare to mm-hmm. find that. And it wasn't even like, okay, I, so I can be seen. Uh-huh. It took a while to get her to want to do this solo thing, yes. period, because that's not her. She wants to kind of stand in back. But I told her, like, listen, the Lord's pushing you forward to, front, to do yes. some great things. So just her character and the fact that she was so humble and not willing to chase the limelight, it really made us say, you know, she would be a perfect fit for somebody that we would like to be behind. Nice. So, Melanie, tell us how you started because I know a little bit of your history. And- well, started in church, New Hope Baptist Church in Jersey City. <laughs> started as a young kid in the choir, then in the other choir, and then just graduate to the adult choir. And um, I sung with my sisters my whole entire life, um, Jay Carter now, that our brother is involved. But um, it was Carter sisters back in the day, you know, five of us. Then my brother came along, and that was Jay Carter. The J stands for Jesus, not him, though, not John <laughs> Carter, but it stands for Jesus. Let him tell well, it. Let him, you know, he's the preeminent one. But but, um, you know, throughout throughout my life, I've just been singing in church. My father been te- was teaching us, you know, different songs as babes, you know, and my mother has a voice as well, you know. So um, it's just always been in me, you know, to sing the good news of Jesus Christ. But um, as far as branching off my own, like he said, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy at all. I was like, Lord, please, no, you know, because yes, yes. it's like it's one thing to be 
covered by my sisters. We sung on stages many a times, you know, and my brother. We sung on stages many a times, but it's way different when you're out there by yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, Lord, this this transition has to be you, because it's like my own my own self, my own flesh yes. don't want to do it, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's like God, I have to do this because I have to be obedient to Your will for my life. Yes. You know, there's so many things. Like even recently, God's calling me into ministry, you know, and I'm like, no, <laughs> again, wow. you know, because yes. I'm like. I, 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 I want to be, I have this thing where it's similar to what you were saying. I have this thing where it's like, you know, I'm like, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be the one that's preaching Jesus and then doing something else on the side, you right. know? So yeah. it's like, Lord, perfect me. And it, it's, and the God's perfection is different from our way Amen. of perfection. Yeah. Right. That's one thing I had to understand. Like, it's not like we do everything across every, you know, T dot every I. That's not his way of perfection. His way of perfection is just being obedient to his will. Yeah. Yes. You know, uh, David, David was, you know, he did many of things that wasn't right, but he was a man after God's own heart. That's what I yes. called him. So it's like, the, so I'm growing to be that woman after God's own heart and always being transparent, like you said, because a lot of people, like even in the mi- music ministry, a lot of people is, are afraid to be transparent. I thank God for my sister here that she's not afraid to tell mm-hmm. the messy side of her as yes. well as the goodness of Jesus mm-hmm. and what he has done. Because in, even in the mess, you know, God is still being glorified, yeah. you know, yeah. even in the mess. So, um, and even in my songwriting, that's where God is bringing me to a to a to a um realness even in the music because it's like a couple of these we heard you know as growing up you know these songs really resonated with my soul but it wasn't telling me where that person came from or what yes, god yes, brought them yes. out of you know so that's that's another way of god is bringing us in a different realm and different area of um reaching the world now you yes. know to get the real you know to talk real talk to them and saying yes i was there just like you or i could have been there because my thoughts were there but god thank god my body didn't go yeah you know what i mean so it's like uh, a real transparency that god is bringing me to and even in my writing that god i'm like god i know i'm gonna get a lot of backlash from this <laughs> i know yes. a lot of people not even gonna want to listen and i think it's god you know yes. but you're bringing me this way so i have to be obedient and go mm. so your music is a testimonial yes Yes, very much so. I like. Very I love so. that because mm-hmm. a lot of times, and me and Norm talked a little bit earlier about that, that we want somebody, we want a pastor who's up there being transparent and telling mm-hmm. us what he's been through because mm-hmm. his testimony is what's going to make me want to do better to say, yeah. oh, yeah. the pastor mm-hmm. been there. Oh, Pastor Sean been there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm good. Okay, so I can be delivered mm-hmm. from that. So Amen. I love it that your music is a testimonial. Yeah. So mm-hmm. tell us where we can find it. On iTunes, you look up Just For Me, Melanie Carter-Smith, and also on Amazon.com. You can purchase it there. It's only 99 cents because everybody can afford it. (laughs) So um, it's just a single. I am also working on my EP, you know, so God is good. I was even know about that, you know, God, one step at a time. But God is saying, no, girl, you got to go. You know, you got to do what I called you to do. So the EP is just about uh, like four four to six, you know, four to six songs, you know, just a just a taste of where God is taking me in music in music Amen. ministry awesome mm-hmm. wow. so we are gonna get into our actually what's actually next yeah. is to knock it off um oh we gotta do one thing right okay you gotta give us at least a little something before oh before you go that. that's yes. right you ain't, get, <laughs> yeah. you ain't getting away that you easy. Got, uh, how about that you ain't getting away that easy. something that's gonna spirit you right now whatever's gonna move you hmm no, she she gotta let the she spirit move her. She, she know how she got this. I remember I wrote a song about um, seeing Jesus's face. Mm. It's called "I Can't Wait." I didn't didn't record it yet. Didn't release it yet. So nobody tried to get it out there. If you hear me, you know. But um, <laughs> got this recorded as yeah, a copyright. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's in the works. It's in the works. So you know, it's just basically when I thought about the goodness of Jesus. When I thought about um, us all, we all got to die sometime. You know, we all got to yes. go sometime. So when I thought about us passing and then seeing Jesus's face, seeing a one who died for me, you know, seeing a one who set me free, who broke the chains that the Mm. devil had over my life, seeing that face. It's, it's a, it's a miraculous feeling that I just felt. And those words just came. So, um, okay. Um, when I dream, I dream of you and All I need in this world is you. Just the thought of seeing you face to face. Standing before you, entering your warm embrace. I can't wait. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I can't wait. 
I can't wait, no, I can't wait. I can't wait. No, 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 I can't wait. I can't wait. No, I can't, no, I can't wait. Amen. Woo. Amen. That is so I pretty. can't wait. I love it. Nice. That is wow. I get that song. Right. Amen. 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 Now, I'm sorry. We're going to get um, into a knock it explain off. Explain a knock it off, surely, fast. Um, knock it off is something that you just want somebody to stop. Like if, uh, say, somebody stepped on your foot or you stepped on somebody's foot and they got an attitude and it was a mistake. You just say, I just want to knock that person off because it wasn't that serious. Okay. You know, or if somebody jumped in front of you, get a car at the grocery store, like knock it off. Mm -hmm. Just something you want people to just stop doing. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I'm going to go first. If 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 I'm having a really good day, (laughs) knock off the people that's trying to bring your spirits down. Yes. Yes. I'm having a really good (laughs) day. Stop trying to (laughs) irritate me. Yes. Just because you're in a bad mood or something. Yes. Who's, hmm. who's next? I'll go next. Okay. I want to knock it off, knock off all you men who know I'm gonna get your checkups. <laughs> and make sure you're good. <laughs> all right. Knock, knock it right off. Back to the okay. health topic. <laughs> yes. Hmm. I want to knock off women who send nasty pictures to men. Oh. The sex <laughs> <gram. laughs> The yes. sex texting. That's what I want. Knock what about yeah. the men that accept them? Mm. <laughs> That's, <not> a <laughs> That's a double knock off. <laughs> Do you have a knock it off melody? Um, I want to knock off all those that are sending me Facebook messages and they're not really the person they say they are. Oh, <laughs> oh I got an answer. Uh oh, he ready. My knock it off is guys, please stop doing twerk videos. Please. Oh, guys, oh, guys, oh, stop, oh, oh, guys, stop no, doing I don't agree twerk with that. videos. It's not a good look. Guys please. are doing twerk, twerk videos. Oh, guys, like men? Guys, men. Guys are doing this too. Oh, wow. 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 Really? Oh, yes. I thought you were saying guys, as yeah. in guys. Let's yeah, like guys, like men. Sure. You wow. 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 This is <laughs> difficult. <laughs> this is difficult. <laughs> it is. Um. Okay, I'm going to go in the same vein. I would like guys to stop send knock off sending pictures of their bodies yes. to women. <laughs> <laughs> and the women who accept them. Amen. Yes. Norm. <laughs> Norm, you gotta knock it off. Very simple. Um I like to knock off Lady V. <laughs> for, for having liquid and spilling it yeah. during the show. I, I should have. And then, and then cursing in front of two pastors. Yeah. Oh. I'm knocking you off. Knock and off. my pocketbook would have been in that chair. Listen, I'm a sinner. And computer. <laughs> and computer. Wow. I'm a sinner who's getting better. Wow. <laughs> Every day, right? And now we're going to. Um, Take it a step by step. step. Love, love Lady V. <laughs> All right. Now we're about to get into our final thought for the night um, about the topic or whatever you want to. My final thought is. Let's all be respectful of God and the house of God. And everybody's going to grow at their own pace. But when you know better, you should do better. Right. That's mm-hmm. my final thought. Okay, my final thought is what I said kind of earlier. Like, just don't go to church and pray in front of the altar. And then on Monday morning, and praying to God. And then Monday morning, you're praying against your neighbor. Don't be, don't be a fake, a phony, put on a facade, be a hypocrite. Don't judge my soul. Just because I look this way don't mean that I'm not out there worshiping in God or I don't have God in my heart or whatever. Just because I don't go to church every single Sunday, I could be praising the Lord in my home or somebody, you know, could be praising God any way they want. Just don't judge somebody else's soul. That's my final thought. Um, my final thought is kind of simple. It's just to keep love in your heart. Yes. And... I feel like if you have love in your heart, no matter what, regardless if you don't know better, you're open to learning, you know. Mm -hmm. If you keep love in your heart, if you see someone who doesn't know better, you'll reach out a hand to to pull them up to teach them better. And when you have love in your heart and you just portray that, it comes across and, you know what I mean? Good intentions. Yeah, you have the good intentions and people receive that better. And it's, it's just... It, it's a trickle effect, mm-hmm. basically. It's you know, it's a it's a trickle effect, right? Mm-hmm. It's all about the approach. So, mm-hmm. my final thought is: um, there's no perfect church, and um, 
basically once you learn the word, you know, be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. Mm. So um, that's it for me. <laughs> Press. My final thought, and you guys did an excellent job. I was in there itching like, I can't oh, wow. a second. Thank you. Um, my final thought is when it comes to people that may not be churched, it comes with discipleship. Like, mm. you have to take somebody under your wing mm-hmm. and keep them close. Relationship is key. Like, they're more receptive to receive from you if there's some type of relationship. relationship. Right. If you have never had any conversation with me, your first conversation can't be, honey, you need to pull that skirt down. Yeah. Do you even know my name? Like, yes. you have to have some type of relationship. And when you do that, people, you'll be surprised. They'll be much more receptive to receive from you correction, and it won't be taken as judgment. Yes. That's my final thought. Good All right, one. amen. Pastor Sean? I'm, my final thought is always to go to the word of God. And it says, therefore, mm. if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yes. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Yes. Amen. 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 And you can find Amen. that in 2 Corinthians Amen. You got to say it. Three, you got to yeah. say it like you're in church. Amen. 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 God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Norm. <laughs> <laughs> well, my final thought is a song. Oh, Pastor amen. Desiree Coleman. Okay. Um, she has a play coming mm-hmm. to New York, and mm-hmm. she has a song with uh, Hezekiah Walker. And uh, this song is in the play, so it's in play format. And uh, she would like us to play that before we no, no problem. We uh, end off. Thank God. But, All right, before we do that, um, but do a you quick, have another? A yeah. quick, quick final thought uh-huh. is... Stop twisting the word of God just to fit your own lifestyle. Mm. Right. I, I mean, that really bothers me. Right. You know, if you're going to be a certain way, whatever, and, and this goes out to a, a lot of people I know, be that way and just say that's because you want to be that way. Right, yeah. Don't use God right. and, and twist his words right. to to justify the way you're living. That's all. Exactly. Is there anything in the chat before we uh, wrap up? Um, we just have our, our same chat, Rebels. Guest 9497 to hung out with us. Guest five, 4572. Shonda. Guest 6019. Yeah, Karaoke Diamond. And they just all hung out and just listened to the word. All right, I want to thank the guest, Pastor B, for coming down, um, Melanie Smith, you know, for definitely... Um, thank you for having me. ...singing yes. a beautiful song for yeah. us and everything. You have a very, very beautiful spirit. Very yes. beautiful. Yes. Pastor, Pastor Sean, Sean Graham, 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 thank you, thank you so much. Thank you you so are much. Awesome. just a light, mm-hmm. just walking, yeah. a tower, <laughs> just shining it all around us. And Amen. keep doing yeah. what you do because you definitely minister to us tonight, and I really appreciate it. Amen. And I hope that you come back as well with us again. And low records. Low press. <laughs> thank low you. Records. Thank, thank you. you. We know thank you, you was itching, us. itching, but uh, thank you for coming down as thank well. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. And as usual, we always have a great show, and we're going to end with one of the, you know. Um, loving all the wrong Faces, loving all the wrong faces, mm-hmm. and Bishop Hez- uh, Hezekiah Walker and Pastor Desiree Coleman. This right. is from their play. All right, and everybody get home safe. Have a good night. My name is Miss Lee, Lady V, and I'm Trey K. And only women wear high heels. Ow! And we're gonna end it with the beautiful Desiree Coleman. I just wanna talk to you, talk to Pastor Desiree you. Coleman. Let me give her her proper title. Jackson. Jackson. Desiree Coleman Jackson. Jackson. This is called Help Me. Excuse me, Lord. But it's me, Des. I need to talk to you. Lord, I know we got a personal relationship. And I know I can come to you at any time. And Lord, well... See, I've been praying and, and I've been fasting and I've been doing what you told me to and I, oh, don't get me wrong, Jesus, but I know you're going to see me through, but it just seems to be getting harder and, and harder and harder and I need help. I need a word. I feel like I'm losing my mind and my faith and I have you here, God, but...
sick and I know you got the poor and you got war to deal with but it's so many other things but you told me that I could call on you Jesus in a day and in a Y'all, that's from the play Loving, Loving All the Wrong Faces. Desiree Coleman Jackson. Pastor Desiree Coleman Jackson. Get the, right. Right. Get the name right. Get the name right. right. Get the name right. <laughs> At least I put the Jackson on it. Get the name right. <laughs> I was Sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> Everybody, have a good night. Another great show with BKS1 Radio and the Ladies of Al. Get home safe. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.